Superstation WGN is your home for big league baseball, so come on home. The following is a presentation of WGN Sports. Texas for Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. The weather report outside, it feels like 99. But inside Minute Maid Park, it's very comfortable, and the Cubs know going into the game they're just a half game back in the National League Central. The Rockies just swept Milwaukee, so we'll see how it plays out here in Houston as the Cubs try to avoid the sweep as they take on the Houston Astros in the finale. Hi again, everyone. Bob Brindley and Len Casper with you. It's been an offensive struggle for the Cubs without Alfonso Soriano. It won't get any easier tonight, but it's been a tough series. It's really been a tough go, Len. The Cubs have had some opportunities, especially early in the ball game last night. They were just unable to cash in. You see what they've done the last couple of ball games. 0 for 20 with runners in scoring position, and three of those six walks you see there came in the first inning last night. So the Cubs not getting a lot of runners on base. Great pitching matchup. A battle of aces. Roy Oswald's been at a very good stretch, but the Cubs have gotten to him lately. Yeah, Cubs have done well against Roy Oswald lately. His last four starts against the Cubs, they banged him around pretty good. The ERA over five, the team hitting over 300. He's been real good his last three starts, however. Carlos Zambrano's last two starts has been bothered by cramping. That should not be an issue tonight. Well, you certainly hope not, and the real important number there is in his last six starts following a Cubs loss, he's 5-0 with an ERA of under 1.5. They need the horse to step it up tonight. Cubs making another roster move in the outfield. We'll tell you about that when we come back. We'll have the lineups and all the action from Houston coming up next. for it. Hey, buddy. What's with the axe? It's a bottle opener. Hop in. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Look, here's Bud Light. And a chainsaw. Uh, that's cold. Heartburn? Painful. Zantac. Okay. Zantac quickly relieves heartburn. Better? Completely. Zantac's fast. Heartburn? Yeah. Prescription. Slow. The leading prescription can take a day or more to fully work. Zantac. Better. Zantac's fast. For heartburn, Zantac's fast. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. I know you were Fall right. in love with Baby, breakfast again. So Get back that feeling with Denny's Extreme Grand Slam. Because at Denny's, you can always eat like it's the weekend. home games in HD on Comcast Digital Cable. Call 1-888 for Best TV today. The Illinois Lottery. No matter how you play, play the Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. By Pepsi. Your world, your Pepsi. And by Southwest Airlines. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, Southwest can get you there with over 3,000 nonstop daily flights to over 60 destinations. Visit Southwest.com today. 
Welcome back to Houston inside Minute Maid Park. Now Lou Pinella's Cubs lineup brought to you by Pepsi. Your world, your Pepsi. Terrio Jones lead at the top. Ramirez, Floyd, DeRosa in the middle. Merton Hill, Zambrano filling it out. Take a look at the Astros defensively. Carlos Lee in left, Jason Lane in center, Luke Scott over in right field, Mike Lamb and Eric Brunlett on the left side. The future Hall of Famer Craig Vigio at second base. Lance Berkman moves in to play first base tonight. Brad Osmus, the veteran behind the plate for right-hander Roy Oswald. And he is ready to work. And against Ryan Terrio, who's done a really nice job as a Cubs leadoff man in the absence of Alfonso Soriano. Three for nine in the series with a couple of doubles. As Oswald looks for his 12th win of the year, Carlos Zambrano, the only 14 game winner currently in the National League. So this is a great matchup. Two strikes on Terrio. Ryan not very happy with that pitch. Chuck Merriweather behind the plate today uh, has been notorious for an inconsistent strike zone. Big one inning, small the next. Just going to have to battle. Inside, one and two, the count. I mentioned uh, in the open that Oswald has been very good over his last three starts over that period of time. 19 innings pitched, 19 strikeouts against only two walks, and has given up only two earned runs in his last three starts. Ground ball to short. Eric Bruntlett moving a bit to his left, and he throws on the first to get Terrio. Bruntlett filling in for the DL'd Adam Everett. Everett on the shelf with a broken leg. So one out here in the first inning, and Jock Jones batting second. Lou Pinella wrote out a ton of lineup cards. He's just trying to find the right mix, and he also mentioned when Jason Kendall gets back in the lineup, he uh, may hit him second just to you know, try to change the mix here. He's trying to find the right lineup without Alfonso Soriano. He knows he has his leadoff man in Terrio. Slow curve just outside on Jock. And Felix P.A. is back with the Cubs. The uh, Cubs today placed outfielder Angel Pagan on the 15-day disabled list with colitis. Angel has not been feeling well uh, the last few weeks. So essentially he's going to be on bed rest for about a week and uh, has had sapped energy and you know, we hope it's only a two week situation for Angel. Uh, the good news for the Cubs on the DL front is that Daryl Ward is going to join the team in Denver tomorrow and he's at about 90 to 95 percent. And he may be back this weekend as Jones takes the walk. And here comes Derek Lee. Ward on the DL with a right calf strain. And the Cubs drew three base on balls in the first inning last night. The last one uh, to Cliff Floyd drove in the only run they were able to score in that inning. Bases loaded, nobody out. And went down one, two, three. And apparently, uh, Aramis Ramirez has been taken out of the lineup. Cliff Floyd is on deck. I heard an announcement here in the press box, and uh, apparently DeRosa has been moved over to third base. Fontenot inserted into the lineup at second base. And as soon as we know, we'll let you know. Fouled back by Derek. One ball, one strike. Well, Ramos did not play last night, and Lou said before the game that he was going to play in every game the rest of this trip. The Cubs' next off day will be Monday. But uh, something happened, or I don't know if that knee's still bothering. The other thing uh, Ramos has been dealing with is uh, a wrist injury, and it's been bothering him for quite some time. So it poss possibly could have flared up. The Cubs did not take batting practice. Essentially just show up stretch and play and another way to kind of mix up the the mojo a little bit. One bounced up there and it's two and two. That's a big slow curveball that Oswald likes to throw and just freeze the hitter that Ephus like curveball. He held on to this one just a little bit too long however hits way out in front of home plate. Nice job by Brad Osmus to stay in front of that ball. 
I think you see Oswald throw a lot of four seam fastballs the big over the top curve uh, that he'll try to throw for strikes and then a sharper later breaking curve that he'll try to throw for swinging strikes. He'll mix in an occasional straight change up an occasional two seam fastball but basically a two pitch pitcher with the four seamer and a couple of different curve balls. I think he wanted that curve ball didn't get the call from Chuck Merriweather three and two. Sure, if Jock asked for time or or not, Rick Reed. You know, a couple of words with Jock. We'll see if he'll be on the move on a 3-2. He is running. And this one's down along the right field line. Luke Scott giving chase. And he can't get it. Well, the wind blew that one right up in the bleachers. Oh, wait a minute. We're right indoors. <laughs> You see Luke Scott chasing it right over to the railing. And another one of these ballparks that puts that railing in right about mid thigh level. Outfielders love that. And we joke about the wind here, but it has been a problem in those ball games where the Astros start with the roof closed and then open it as the sun goes down. That will not happen tonight. Uh, for obvious reasons, it is smoking hot outside. As you mentioned, feels like 99 in the shade, maybe. It is really hot outside. But early in the season and late in the season, when the evening temperatures allow, they start the ball game with the roof closed and then open it during the course of the ball game. And because the roof takes so long to open, uh, I always felt it created an unfair advantage for the Astros. You watch those flags out in center field uh, obviously not moving right now but as the roof starts to open they will blow in and then when the roof gets completely open they will turn around and blow straight out to left center field and if you're the visiting team while you're at the plate the winds are blowing in the roof is in the process of opening up and by the time the Astros get to the plate the winds blowing straight out. So back to back walks two on for Cliff Floyd. I seem to recall you had a starting pitcher who uh, made some requests regarding the roof. Well, that was strictly weather related. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you try to create the best home field advantage possible. There's a ground ball, should be two, four, six, three. And the Astros turn it to get Oswald out of the first inning. Carlos Zambrano will take the ball and we come back to Houston. With convenient flights every day, Southwest Airlines gives you the freedom to do business out of town and still come home at night. Winston, I'm home! <laughs> Fly one of Southwest's eight daily nonstops from Chicago Midway to the San Francisco Bay Area for just $99, including new service to San Francisco International starting August 26th. You are now free to move about the country. Hey, what are you looking at? Ever wish you could hang out with a major leaguer like David Wright? Looks like you need a roommate. Now you can with Fathead. Do you even know what a Fathead is? Let me see what you got on your wall. Mine, mine has attitude. I got my hitting stance going. You might want other people's, but you definitely want mine. Fathead is a life-sized wall graphic that brings the action and intensity of the game right into your home or office. It's so real, I might not even have to go to team meetings anymore. Fathead are easy to put up and brings instant impact to your wall. It's so simple, even a pitcher can do it. Officially licensed by Major League Baseball Properties, Major League Baseball Players Association, NASCAR, the NBA, and the NFL and Players Inc., plus other major sports and entertainment properties. Fathead brings the impact and imagination of the moment to fans of all ages. You can't get any closer to the action than this. So call now or go to fathead.com to find all your favorite fatheads. You know what you should do? You should buy it as a gift. All you gotta do is go to fathead.com. Fathead. Live big, real big. I'd shave my head for a fathead. Well, the Astros trying to sweep the Cubs at Minute Maid Park for the first time ever. Craig Biggio, over 3,000 hits, had the game-winning RBI last night. Lamb Berkman, Carlos Lee's had a big series, good numbers against Zambrano. Luke Scott in right, Jason Lane in center, Bruntlett, Osmus, and Oswalt, 7 through 9. And here's how the Cubs take the field defensively. Brought to you by Pepsi, your world, your Pepsi. Merton Jones and Floyd across the outfield. DeRosa, a late move from second to third. Terrio at shortstop. Mike Fontenot, a late insertion at second base. 
Derek Lee at first. Coy Hill will be doing the catching tonight for Big Z, Carlos Zambrano. Tied for the major league lead with his 14 wins. Trying to make it 15 tonight. He's two strikeouts away from a milestone. He has 998 in his career. Vigio gives it a ride deep left center. Jock Jones runs it down right in front of that 3,000 banner honoring Craig Vigio. A lot of room to roam here at Minute Maid Park from gap to gap. Very deep, 436 in straightaway center. And Jock Jones got a good jump on this ball. Biggio making a bid for extra bases and JJ able to run it down right in front of that 3,000 banner. Now Mike Lamb looking at strike one. His first start in the series, we saw Ty Wigginton against back to back left handed starters in the first two games. Uh, we, we mentioned the home field advantage that you try to create. We also brought up Carlos Zambrano the last two starts bothered by some cramping. Jones again running hard now able to cruise and haul it in. I was talking with one of the Astros broadcasters who joked well considering the cramping and the heat maybe they should open the roof tonight. <laughs> Well, I think they may lose about half their fans if they uh, open the roof tonight. Well, you'd like to think that Carlos learned his lesson. You know, that cramping has been a problem off and on throughout his career. Now, what was it, Phil Garner? He was looking to put some sort of voodoo curse on Zambrano because he hasn't given up a run in over his last 23 innings against the Astros. He said he went on the internet, typed in voodoo curse, and uh, it pulled up a bunch of websites that help you get back at a uh, former boyfriend or girlfriend, which is not quite what he was looking for. So he was going to continue to look for that voodoo curse. That's now 23 and a third innings against Houston without allowing an earned run. Lance Berkman sends that one very high. Almost hit one of those beams as a Lance foul. Near the rafters. It looked like a breaking ball that just hung right there on the inside part of the plate. That cement mixer slider that just didn't quite get to the spot, but fortunately it was far enough inside that Berkman couldn't keep it there. Swing and a miss, and it's an easy one, two, three for Zambrano. Nothing, nothing after one. Sugar is such a hassle. Mom, why not make your life easier? Try the Breeze 2 meter. It's the one I use because it has 10 tests in one disc, so you don't have to struggle with all those little strips. And I never have to code. Fewer steps. That sounds a lot easier. <laughs> Introducing the new Breeze 2 meter from Bear. It's the only meter with a 10 test disc, so just pull and test. And now with a smaller blood sample and results in just five seconds, it's easier than ever. So if you're ready for an easy meter with no coding, now's the time to switch. And if you already use the Breeze meter, upgrade today. Just call 800-500-7300 or visit beardiabetes.com to get your free Breeze 2 meter. That's a $65 value that's yours free. You are so smart. Well, I get it from my mother. Of course you do. Call now or go to BearDiabetes.com for your free new Breeze 2 meter. That's easy accuracy. Answered by Bear. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. I know you were right. Fall in love with breakfast again. Get back that feeling with breakfast anytime you want with Denny's Extreme Grand Slam. American Idol Rewind. Saturday, Superstation WGA. Second inning, Mark DeRosa seven for 14 against Roy Oswald. And the 
again. Mark Lang third base, a late scratch. Uh, Ramos Ramirez with right wrist soreness. So it has been a lingering injury. And man, let's hope that doesn't keep him out long. You have Soriano on the disabled list, and Ramirez out at least tonight. Two huge losses in a lineup that's struggling right now. Well, it's a common problem that every team in Major League Baseball has at some point in the season. And your ability to withstand those injuries, keep your head above water, get contributions from many other people to make up for the loss of those two important guys. Again, Angel Pagan put on the DL today. Felix P.A. back from Iowa. Now tip to make it two and two on DeRosa. So the Cubs right now have four left-handed hitting outfielders and I would say one and a half right-handed hitting outfielders. Matt Merton and Mark DeRosa. We'll call him half an outfielder since he plays a lot of infield as well. And he had struggled, Felix did, at this level, but uh, really doing well at AAA. Not sure how much he's going to play. I guess it just depends on how things go tonight. Again, all right-handed starters against the Cubs the rest of the weekend. The Cubs will not face Jeff Francis. With the Rockies, he won today. But I also see that Jason Hirsch, who is scheduled to start on Sunday, has a broken leg. DeRosa deposits that ball into the left field corner to make it 8 for 15 against Oswald. And he has the first hit of the night. Sometimes it makes you wonder if pitchers don't overthink themselves out there on the mound after a series of fastballs that DeRosa just couldn't seem to get around on. He rolls a slow curveball up there on the inside part of the plate. Speeding up Mark DeRosa's bat, and he finds that left field corner for a double. But to send him a thank you note after that one. And he was fouling balls into that first base dugout. Fastballs on the inside part of the plate, and got the off speed pitch and banged it into the left field corner. Now, the late addition to the lineup, Mike Fontenot playing second. Just to follow up on the Jason Hirsch note, last night was uh, caught by a line drive in the first inning. And then stayed in for five more frames, got the win over Milwaukee. They found out today that he had suffered a broken leg. Fractured fibula in his lower right leg. So I doubt he's going to start on Sunday. Probably not. That's, just Boy, that's, that's the stuff of legends, though. Guy, uh, regardless of what he does the rest of his career, I guarantee you his teammates and the Brewers who saw that uh, will remember that for a long time. I think that's a series that Brewers would rather forget. The Rockies scored 30 runs the last two games, including 19 today. The Rockies had five hitters with at least three knocks. Pulled on the ground, that'll move DeRosa to third base as Fontenot's thrown out by Biggio. Well, nice job by Mike Fontenot. Really rolled over that left hand to make sure he pulled that ball to the right side of the field to advance DeRosa on to third base for Matt Merton. Well, that'll go down as an 0 for 1 in the box score, but uh, I guarantee his teammates will be right there to give him some high fives. Watch him roll that top hand over to make sure he hits that ball to the right side of the field. Nicely done. Now that adds to the 0 for with runners in scoring position, although he was not 100% trying to knock the guy in. He was just trying to move him up. An LSU fan in the ballpark, I'm sure appreciated the Fontenot ground out. Seen a lot of Tiger fans here in Houston the last three days. Infield in against Matt Merton who gets the start after coming in in the sixth inning last night and then in the seventh had a long home run to left center. Good to see him turn on a pitch and drive it out. The second home run of the year. The throw's going to go to the plate. The slide. 
the tag, and he's out. So make it over 22 with men in scoring position in this series as Brentlett nails Mark DeRosa. Boy, an indication of the frustration with the offense and perhaps the lack of faith that you're going to do much against Roy Oswald tonight. Mark DeRosa going on contact with the infield playing in. That's yeah, a routine play for Eric Brundlett to throw on to Brad Osmus for the easy out at home plate. And also the fact you're down at the bottom of the order you tend to be a little more aggressive with your uh, seven eight nine hitters up at the plate or in this case the eight nine hitter. I think that's more a reflection of the fact that the Cubs just have not put runners on the plate recently. Take some chances. Low and away on Coy Hill, the switch hitting backstop who's catching Carlos Zambrano, something he's done a lot. It was Jason Kendall the last time around. Strike one and one. Well, to say these are two of the best starters in the league is an understatement. Since 2003, in the National League, Roy Oswalt's 76 wins leading the way. Carlos Zambrano second on that list was 73. So really the last five years including 07 you could claim two of the top maybe three or four pitchers in the entire league. And the starting pitching really all around Bob in this series has been fantastic both sides. You had Wandy Rodriguez and Rich Hill Monday night Sean Marshall gave up. A bunch of runs in the sixth, but through five had allowed only one. And Woody Williams I mean, it, it looked like he might not even get out of the first inning at all. Gave up just one run and then five scoreless innings after that to get the win last night. Yeah, you talked about Rich Hill's outing in the first game of the series. He was magnificent with seven strong innings, only gave up three hits and one run. It up with a no decision, but uh, boy, if he continues to pitch that way, everything will be just fine. You know, talking about Oswald and Zambrano, and yeah, certainly anybody you talk to will tell you they're among the elite pitchers in the game right now. The biggest difference is the base on balls. Oswald is a guy that doesn't walk very many, and usually when he does, it's because he's pitching around somebody with the idea of going after the next hitter in the lineup. We know Carlos. Uh, at times can lose that strike zone. He walked seven in his last outing against the Mets. Of course, some of that could be attributed to the cramps that he was suffering from. Three and two. Merton will be moving. There he goes. Up the middle. Bruntlet back at second. And that's the inning. Cubs had a chance. Lead off double runner at third with one out, but couldn't get him in. Still scoreless. How long is this going to last? I'm ready to hit the Bud Light. I already took care of it. Say, well, all right, now we are gathered here today to join in marriage Bob and Julie. Bob, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do I hear and I do? I do. Do I hear and I do? Uh, I, I do. Julie, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do I hear and I do? I do. Do I hear and I do? I, I do. Going once, going twice, and now pronounce you husband and wife, you may kiss the bride. And away we go. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. So what do I owe you? 100, 100 and a quarter, 100 and a half, 175, 200, not 200 and a quarter. That's cold. You're so funny. Mm. I love our family tradition. What's that? Where we pass our plates to the right. When did that become a family tradition? When you ordered that. <laughs> new shrimp caprese with grilled garlic herb shrimp or new grilled steak caprese. Two great new dishes at Olive Garden. When you know it, one moment we're on the road to romance when suddenly it gets interrupted. That's why for guys like me with ED, 
they're Cialis. Cialis is the only erectile dysfunction tablet clinically proven to both go to work fast in as little as 30 minutes for some men and work up to 36 hours. The fact that Cialis can work fast is great, but having up to 36 hours gives me the option of being ready once the moment is finally right. Tell your doctor about your medical conditions and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience priapism, an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease in vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Why ask your doctor about Cialis? Because even after an interruption, you can still be ready. When the moment is right, you can be ready with Cialis. Becker, late nights on Superstation WGA. Back here at Minute Maid Park, bottom of the second inning, comes and left two men on in the first two innings. Chicago comes baseball on WGN Sports. Your official summer baseball station is brought to you by refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Cubs had a chance, could not score against Roy Oswalt. So bottom of the second, Carlos Lee facing Carlos Zambrano, called strike. Uh, the Astros cleanup hitter, second in the league with 92 RBIs. Lee four for six in the series. One one pitch is low. Two and one. Well, kind of by default. The uh, Brewers and the Cubs here the last week or so. That one's drilled toward the alley. Nobody's going to catch it. It'll go all the way to the wall as Jock Jones will pick it up. And Carlos Lee with an easy double. So he has now an eight-game hitting streak. Well, the Brewers have kept the Cubs within a game or a half game by really struggling lately, even though the Cubs have dropped five of six. But the other thing, Bob, is... The top two teams have really kept the Cardinals and maybe even these Astros in it. If one of those two clubs can get really, really hot, you know, they might sneak back in. The Astros are nine out. And the Cardinals have been up and down just six and a half back after Milwaukee lost. There's still enough time. Well, there's plenty of time left. Uh, and I talked about it in the first game of this series, uh, talking to some of the Astros coaches and Phil Garner and some of the players. You know about their patented second half comebacks and I just got the impression that this particular Astros ball club doesn't have the same kind of mojo that teams in the past but when you play a good series against a team that's battling for first place in your division you start moving things in the right direction you start believing in yourself and good things start happening I mean we saw what happened with the Cubs when they got on that nice run over the last month or month and a half and Certainly at the major league level, any team is capable of turning things around in a hurry. Hitters count here on Luke Scott. Playing right. Luke Scott, I think, with some deceiving numbers. He's hitting just 249. But he'll take walks. It's an on-base percentage of 345, and he's hit for power. Slugging 494. Well, and Luke Scott in this situation is trying to do exactly what Mike Fontenot did for the Cubs in the top half of the inning, trying to roll that ball to the right side of the field. Swings through a 3-0 pitch right there. Lombrano with 10 wins against five losses versus Houston. The most wins he has against any opponent. And he's six and one here at Minute Maid, the most in any road ballpark. It's a strike three and two. Full count. An interesting little interchange there between Zambrano on the mound and Carlos Lee leading off at second base. Carlos Lee is one of those base runners. If you ignore him, he'll steal a base on you. And he was just standing like he is right there, very casually out there at second base. When Carlos turned his head toward home plate, 
Carlos Lee looked like he was ready to break for third, but Carlos gave him a second look back there to make sure he stopped. Something the rest of the Cubs pitching staff uh, could take a lesson from. That ball will end up in the Cubs dugout because it's career strikeout number 1,000 for Carlos Zambrano. And he actually started walking toward the dugout, I think, wondering, why didn't I get that baseball back? <laughs> Carlos does such a good job not only of unloading the ball quickly to home plate but burying his delivery he'll hold the ball one time he'll quick pitch the next give you two or three different looks back there at second base it's very tough for a base runner to time Carlos Zambrano which is why he rarely gives up a stolen base. So earlier this year Zambrano passed 1000 innings and now with 1000 strikeouts. Carrie Wood has the most strikeouts of any current Cub with 1,301. Ryan Dempster closing in on 1,000. He has 992. <laughs> Terry Wood last night with his second appearance of the year. An inning and two thirds. He gave up a couple of inherited runs when he came in. In the sixth inning, but then went one, two, three in the seventh. I love watching some of the communication that takes place between pitches. Uh, on the pitch before Zambrano got the throw back from Coy Hill, and as he was walking back to the rubber, Carlos Lee had his head turned, wasn't looking at Zambrano. And Zambrano just indicated to Mike Fontenot, just stay back. Just play back. Don't even decoy in on the runner. He's not going to allow him to get enough of a walking lead to steal third base. And Carlos wants to make sure that Fontenot has his position covered defensively and doesn't get pulled over there toward the bag and open a hole on the right side. The 2-1 on lane. He moved his hands, but Zambrano gets the call. Lane hit a home run last night that I'm not sure anybody actually saw land. I asked around and everybody said what we said. Couldn't see it. It was way out above the Crawford boxes and left. Well, it was about this time of night and there's some glare off the buildings over there in downtown Houston. The, the lights are on. Just about everybody in the ballpark, uh, the two of us included, we lost it. But you could tell by the sound and the trajectory that it wasn't going to be good for the Cubs. Zambrano still keeping a close watch on Lee as Lane chases. And Hill will fire to Lee. Up play by Coy Hill behind the plate. Not only blocking this strike three pitch in the dirt, looked like a splitter really bottomed out. Gets a swinging strike from Lane, and then Coy Hill comes out from behind the chute to throw on to first, but checks on Carlos Lee at second base before throwing on for the easy out at first. I need to get Carlos Lee off the bases. Too many Carloses. I'm getting myself confused. Carlos checks on Carlos. It's going to be a tough play, and DeRosa can't make it there. Handed Bruntlett's on with an infield hit. A Baltimore chop, and he gets on. Well, once again, another play that really didn't amount to anything, but you really have to love the field awareness of Ryan Terrio. DeRosa fans on the barehanded attempt. Terrio picks it up, fakes the throw to first, and then sprints toward third base, hoping that he got Carlos Lee to come too far around the bag. That guy is a heads-up player. Plugged in. That's the term we used to use with guys like Ryan Terrio. He's plugged in every night, involved in every play. Brad Osmus, strike one. Lower part of the zone. Had a leadoff double in the sixth inning last night and would score the game winning run. He would be knocked in 
by fellow veteran Craig Biggio. It was the first of four in that inning. Astros won it 5 2. Chopping on that gum. Slide step in the pitch. Slider missed. On Friday against the Mets, Z tied a career high with seven walks, but he limited the Mets to just one run and five innings plus before leaving due to the heat related cramping. That slider's in there, two and two. When you go back to September 30th of 2005, he is 5 0 with a 0 0.51 against the Astros. Called strike three. The fastball freezes Osmus and Houston strands a couple. Locked him up. Well, look at the movement on that pitch. Still scoreless. At Quiznos, chefs create special sauces for our subs at Wrong Way. Mustard? Mayo? Quiznos has the steakhouse beef dip sub with pan roasted au jus. Uh, au jus. Steakhouse flavors without the steakhouse. Quiznos. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, toasty. This is the gel that got America gelling. Now Dr. Schultz has put two amazing gels together to create an insole that's soft and supportive for outrageous comfort. The new improved massage and gel insole. Dr. Schultz. Get in. Hey, Cubs fans, keep your eye on the ball. Every time a Cubs player hits a homer at Wrigley, you could be a winner. It's the Southwest Airlines How Far Did It Fly Home Run Contest. After every Cubs homer, write down the distance along with your name and address and send it to WGN TV. Ten winners will receive two round trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. For every Cubs homer, ask yourself, how far did it fly? From Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the Chicago Cubs. In the tradition of great police dramas comes a show that's not even close to any of those shows. Slipped in poop. It's a crime. Never actually kicked a lock on. But they're cops. Reno 911 premieres September 14th on Superstation WGN. I want to talk so much about hydrating, trying to avoid the cramping. Carlos has heeded the Cubs trainer's advice. And getting ready to bat. And he loves hitting in this ballpark. Fouls it away. Four career home runs against Houston. Three here at Minute Maid Park. He has slugged 591 in 22 career at bats in this park. He's hit three home runs against the Astros over his last 10 starts with seven RBIs. Now we know Carlos has the kind of power to reach that right center field gap. We saw him hit a ball in the bullpen here last year, but uh, it's those Crawford boxes in left field. If he happens to swing a little bit late on a fastball and get it up in the air, those, those Crawford boxes are easily reachable, even though it's Carlos's opposite field. Big swing and a miss. Strike three. One thing about Carlos, he rarely gets cheated. He's going to get his hacks in up there when he gets an opportunity to swing that bat. And this one is no exception. Big curve ball on the two strike count. And 
was looking out there to right field where that one would have landed if he made contact. He also may have been looking at the pitch speed. Roy Oswald is one of those rare guys who will throw his fastball at, for instance, 93. His curveball can be in the upper 60s. A pretty big split. And as I mentioned earlier, he'll, he'll change speeds on his breaking ball. He rarely throws a straight changeup, but he will throw that curveball, as you said, in the 60s, in the low 70s, in the mid 70s. Normally like to give you the pitch speed readout. Unable to do that tonight, so we'll try to sprinkle it in verbally as we move along. You just may hear some random numbers. And that's what it is. Terry O'Hustling. He's gonna make it without a throw from Mike Lamb. Well, I'll tell you for me, Len, uh, that's that's a bad play by Mike Lamb at third base. You got no chance to get Ryan Terrio. See how far deep he was when the play started. He comes charging in and makes a play on the run with no chance to throw Terrio out of first. You might as well let that ball go and hope it hits a footprint or something and bounces into foul territory because you're not going to get him at first base. Jones walked his first time. Bat. The barrel actually hit the backstop, fortunately, and as Brunlett made the catch on that soft liner. Want to see a Cubs game from the front row at Wrigley Field? Now you can visit Cubs.com and click on the front row auction to bid on tickets to the hottest games this summer. Cubs.com, where baseball is always on. A rough night for Derek Lee last night. He walked in the first inning, but then struck out his final three plate appearances twice of the looking variety, once against Woody Williams, the other time against Dave Borkowski. And I asked him about those uh, strike three pitches. He said in both cases they were just really, really good pitches. You know, sometimes you, you take a called third and you're convinced it's a ball. Or you take a call third and you think it was going to be a ball, but you admit it was a strike. And Derek said they were, they were just kind of tip your cap type pitches. Well, unfortunately, the second called strike three came with Ryan Terrio on third base in the seventh inning. That was uh, one of the other missed opportunities for the Cubs in the ball game last night. And he also added he probably should have swung. But how much time do you have to determine whether or not to swing? It's, uh, <laughs> it varies between three and four tenths of a second from the time that pitcher lets the ball go until the time it gets into the hitting zone. You've got to determine what the pitch is, where the pitch is, and do I want to swing at it? Ryan Terrio picked up his 20th stolen base of the season in the first game of this series. And with the Cubs offense sputtering, uh, you would expect Lou to be a little more aggressive. We saw DeRosa get thrown out at the plate on a contact play earlier in the game, but Terrio's still over there at first base. I would guess he'll be running on this 3-1 pitch to Derek Lee. Nope. Spins a curveball. It's low. And Lee will take first. That might have been a slider. It was up in the uh, low 80s. Roy Oswald. Third walk he's given up. Cliff Floyd hit into a 4-6-3 double play to end the opening inning. Cliff came in hitting 381 with two home runs against tonight's Astros starter.
Coleman was optioned yesterday to Triple A Iowa. Also uh, had an MRI on his shoulder that had been bothering him. He has AC joint irritation. Nothing serious. So he will not end up on the DL at this point. We mentioned Daryl Ward will rejoin the club tomorrow. He's going to work out before the game and could be activated at some point in that series. Alfonso Soriano uh, won't be activated in this series. He just went on the shelf Monday, but he will be at Coors Field tomorrow. One and two. 66 mile an hour breaking ball that time for Roy Oswald. Just misses off the outside corner with that late break. Also, if you just joined us, Felix PA back from Iowa as Angel Pagan has been placed on the DL as he battles colitis. There were a couple games on that last homestand where Angel was a little bit under the weather. Once again, I'm not a doctor, but I wonder if that wasn't the beginnings of uh, what eventually put him on the disabled list here today. And the Cubs right now have 10 players on their roster who were not on the opening day 25 man left center. And they will be cut off by Carlos Lee. As the Cubs lead two, they have stranded four through three and nothing, nothing to score. Who is Dave Chappelle? Really? He's Rick James. Lil John. Blackzilla. A Black Klansman. A Milkman. Tron Carter. Silky Johnson. Gallagher Prince. It's a celebration. Chappelle's show is coming to late night. Premiere September 14th on Superstation WGN. Okay, I've been working on this plan for three years, and today's the day. Okay. Every Friday, the same Bud Light delivery guy takes the same route past us. Okay. You're the only one who can make the leap. Okay. When I say go, you jump over, grab some Bud Light, and jump back. Okay. Here he comes. Okay. One, two, three, and go. What'd you say? Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Seriously, what'd you say? That's cold. Heartburn? Painful. Zantac. Okay. Better? Completely. Zantac's fast. Maximum strength Zantac after a meal quickly relieves heartburn. Dinner? Sure. Zantac first. Prevents? Definitely Zantac's fast. Maximum strength Zantac before a meal prevents heartburn. Heartburn? Yeah. Prescription? Slow. The leading prescription can take a day or more to fully work. Zantac. Better. Zantac's fast. For heartburn, why wait? Zantac's fast. Thursday, August 9th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Well, he's only a couple of wins away from his career best. And it could be on his way to a 20-win campaign. Looks for number 15 tonight. Facing his counterpart, Roy Oswalt, for the first time tonight. No score, each team with two hits. A 1 0 pitch. It's away 2 and nothing at Oswald, who has one career home run. Fastball, 87. You know, Carlos is littered all over the leaderboard. This is since June 6th, first in ERA, first in wins, second in strikeouts. 
on the season. The opponent's batting average 217 while Carlos is hitting 281. That's remarkable. That's what he said. Uh, my season starts now. Big hand for Craig Biggio. He's tied for 22nd on the all-time hit list with Lou Brock, 3,023. He'll retire after this season. Well, it's been a good 10 years. They've had the killer bees here in Houston. Bagwell, Biggio, Bell at one point, Berkman. And at this point, Bob, the guy who's going to replace him at second base is Chris Burke. I think that's a prerequisite. Now you've got to earn that title, killer bee. You don't just get to take it over. You, you've got to earn it with what you do on the field. And certainly Craig Biggio has done that in his career. And he has just given the Astros the lead. Boxes. His career home run, number 289. Now when they built this ballpark, they said those boxes in left field were for Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio, and Biggio takes advantage of them right here. He knows it's gone as soon as he makes contact. He's hit enough balls out there in those Crawford boxes. He knows when he got enough. His 34th career blast against the Cubs. And he's now all alone. In 22nd place. And he's also 29 hits behind Rod Carew for 21st. Well, you start throwing around names like Lou Brock and Rod Carew. That uh, kind of puts into perspective the kind of career that Craig Biggio has had here in Houston. It's the first earned run for the Astros in their last 24 innings against Zambrano. Right, it was a line drive rocket into those seats in left field. And Biggio, uh, you know, most leadoff hitters, you would have to consider them spray hitters. They hit the ball all around the ballpark. And not Craig Biggio. He tries to pull the ball. He wants to pull the ball to left field until he gets to two strikes. And if you happen to make a mistake from the middle of the plate in, up until two strikes, he is going to take a rip at those left field bleachers. He's had some really good home run years the last three. His career high was set in 2005. He hit 26, 24 the year before that. Two to Lamb, and he stays alive. It was a 64 mile an hour curveball. It was an Oswald like bender. It's a very effective pitch if you can get it around the strike zone, especially down in the strike zone. That hitter sees that ball as big as a beach ball coming up there to home plate. It looks like a pitch you should be able to mash, but the change of speeds and the movement straight down toward the ground, invariably you roll over on top of that pitch and hit an easy ground. Now Lance Berkman, who is seven for 53. Against Zambrano in his career. Does have three home runs. He has one hit in his last 21 at bats against Big Z. Boy, this is. Uh, go ahead, Bob. I was just going to say, it may go back further than that. My stat sheet only goes back to your most recent 20 at bats, and he only had one hit in those 20, plus the one tonight. The two and one pitch missed his target by a pretty good stretch there. Three and one. 
Well, this is shaping up to be a very challenging trip. The Astros have won 16 of their last 23 here at home. Berkman walks. And you feel like you're walking into a buzzsaw going into Colorado. The Rockies have won nine consecutive home series. They just blew out Milwaukee 19 to 4 today. They scored 11 runs last night. You're happy they swept Milwaukee, but all of a sudden they're playing some of their best baseball of the season. Well, hopefully they'll be fatigued from running the bases so much in that mile high altitude. You think about it, the Cubs swept the Astros at Wrigley Field the last time these two clubs met. Now the Astros try, trying to return the favor. The Cubs also swept the Rockies on the north side of Chicago. And we saw them in June. But you have a much different feeling when you play them at altitude at Coors Field. And that'll be a four-game series starting tomorrow night. First things first, trailing one to nothing tonight. One and one on lead. The El Caballo fans are in attendance. It's El Toro versus El Caballo. Job of staying away from Carlos Lee's power in this series, but he in turn has taken his base hits to right field. So a double into the gap. His first at bat of this ball game, leading off the second. He also had an RBI double in the ball game last night on a ball hit to right center field. Tapper and it kicks back. So you were getting confused with Carlos against Carlos. How about the, the, the bull against the horse? Call him by numbers here pretty soon. Well, I assume the horse can outrun the bull, but if it's a head-to-head -head competition, then the bull's going to win. By Lee. Just nicked it, still one and two. and they hold Lee to a single. If it does not hit the corner where it juts out, it might roll all the way to the wall. We'll get another look at this one. Carlos comes back with a changeup, unfortunately. Belt high inside part of the plate, and with Carlos Lee able to keep it fair. I think you're right, Lance. If that ball gets down in the corner, there's a pretty good chance Lance Berkman's going to score all the way from first base. He was off with contact. The ball missed the uh, ball boy down the left field line, but hit that uh, little area that sticks out and ricocheted right back in front of Matt Burton. Able to hold Berkman at third and Lee at first. Actually, it was a pretty close play at first. Carlos Lee a bit nonchalant in getting back to the back. It's all part of his act. He tries to look like he's a, a disinterested base runner, hoping that the pitcher will not pay any attention to him, and that's about the time he just takes off on first movement and steals a base. Stole one off Rich Hill the other night. He's got eight on the season. He's had some big stolen base seasons in the past, and then most of it is because pitchers just don't pay enough attention to him over there. I mean, you think about it. If I told you that Carlos has three more steals than Derek Lee, 
Might be surprised, but that's the case. I think we would both agree that Derek Lee would uh, would win in that speed chart. And he hasn't run that much. High pitch inning, 30 already for Zambrano. That's 31. And six times in Carlos Lee's career, he's reached double digits in stolen bases, including a high of 18 when he was a member of the White Sox. Two and two on Scott. He's been hot, hitting over 400 his last 15 games, but this is his first start of the series. It deep Cliff Floyd or had to go over his head. One hops the wall. Berkman in Carlos Lee motoring around. The throw goes to the plate. That'll be a triple for Luke Scott, and it's three to nothing. Crushed it. Another pitch up over the heart of the plate. Not much on it. Scott splits that gap out there over the head of Cliff Floyd. Played it on a couple hops off the fence. His sidearm throw back to Mike Fontenot. Fontenot relays on to home plate, but they had no play at the dish. They had no play at third base on Scott. A clean triple to drive into. It's his third triple of the year. You can't let him get too many more. Now with Roy Oswald on the mound and a struggling Cubs offense. Now there have been stretches over the last month or so where you didn't feel too bad falling behind three runs early in a ball game because there was a lot of resiliency. The offense showed the ability to bounce back late in the game. They're going to have to find that ability again today. Lane grounds out to short, but the Astros get three. Big home run by Biggio, two run triple by Luke Scott, and it's three to nothing, Houston. Philly cheesesteak pizza. Hmm, big foldable slices or steak and cheese. Guys, Brooklyn or Philly? Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No, Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. The debate rages on. Brooklyn. Get a large one topping Brooklyn style or a medium Philly cheesesteak pizza for just $9.99. Call or get them online. Single again. Will I still look eligible with gray hair? Is that all people will see? How do you make a clean break? Just for Men stops gray from hiding who you are. Easy with five minute target gray technology. Dating again is easier than I thought. And you wonder, why did I ever put up with gray hair? Let the real you come through. Stay in the game with Just for Men. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs.
Well, a couple of days out of the Astros lineup did not cool off Luke Scott. Two run triple to make it three to nothing earlier in the inning. A home run by Craig Biggio. So some work to do tonight against Oswald. Two strikes on Mark DeRosa. Back Scott getting his first start since Saturday in Florida. There's a good start to the fourth inning. And DeRosa's two for two. Hey, Cup fans, on Friday, August 17th, it's floppy hat day at Wrigley Field, one of my favorites. Watch the Cubs battle of the St. Louis Cardinals at 120 and be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans, 21 and older, will receive a Cubs floppy hat. Compliments of Anheuser-Busch. Did you wear your Cubs floppy hat to Lollapalooza? I, I did not, actually. I, I wore some other alternative headgear. You know, a lot of alternative bands. I thought the floppy hat was maybe a little too mainstream. Okay. I like that giveaway because it's for 21 and older. Most of the things that the, the Cubs give away are for kids, 13 and under, 12 and under. This is one for the adults. I like it. Great for hanging fishing lures off the floppy cap. One and one on Fontenot. Alternative headgear. Yes. Okay. I would ask you what that would be, but I'll just just ponder what it could possibly be. Maybe a bandana? It involved a bandana and a red baseball cap. All right. Well, down three here in the fourth. You, you change your mindset at least a little bit. Not so concerned about simply moving runners up. You don't want to give up outs. There you go. First and second. You want to pile up some base runners. Controlled swing by Mike Fontenot going right back up the middle of the field on a fastball that was actually off the outside corner. Managed to get the barrel of the bat on it and a clean single into center field. Well, and we were talking between innings. How nice would it be for somebody to whack a three run home run once in a while? It seems like the Cubs uh, obviously have missed some opportunities in this series to score runs. I can't remember the last time we saw a three run home run. One swing, you can uh, kind of make up for a lot of missed opportunities. Cubs are 13th in the National League with 89 home runs. Fly ball for Jason Lane. Barossa tagged. He'll have to retreat to second base. Not sure why. Jason Lane moving to his left out there in the gap in right center field. He was conceding that DeRosa was going to advance to third base. I mean, Lane was on the move. It's different if the guy's stationary and has his momentum going back towards his target, but he was content just to try to hold Fontenot at first base and keep the double play in order. I'm not sure why DeRosa stopped right there. It almost looked, Bob, like he, he wasn't committed to going. He was just going to test the waters. And at that point, it might have been too late. Maybe you never know. Sometimes a base runner goes back there to tag up on a play like that, and maybe he feels he left too soon. And if that's the case, then absolutely you have to go back to the bag. And that's the one place, tell me if I'm wrong, where you don't have a base coach there really helping you. That, that's all a read play, right? That's, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you do your homework ahead of time. You know the arm strength of the outfielder. You can see whether he's stationary. Is he moving forward? Is he moving back? And you put all those things in the computer, and then you make your judgment on whether to advance or not. Meantime, two and one to count on Coy Hill. Oswald. A look at the runner at second. Drifts outside. That was a heater at 92, 3 and 1. Zambrano on deck. The Astros grabbed the lead with three runs in the last half inning. 
Well, I said I couldn't remember when the last three run homer was. And of course, Mark Brady remembers July 28th against Cincinnati in the first inning. Alfonso Soriano with a three run bomb. Pitcher strike, three and two. That's a good take by Coy Hill. Probably can't do much with that pitch, and you want to swing at a 3 1 that you can do a lot of damage with. And you just accept the strike and go to work here on a 3 2. And he walked him. Bases loaded. And Carlos can help himself here, help his team get right back into the ballgame. Carlos is in front of his voice vibrates the glass out there in left center field. Way out in front and over top, the curveball at 70. Doesn't look like they're uh, talking. A whole lot to each other. Well, started him soft at 70, then the hard stuff at 94. What's he going to get on the third one? Well, I think judging from that swing, he'll probably get another fastball up in the zone, the traditional up the ladder approach. Called strike three. And he just busted his back. It's impressive that he can do that, but I just hope he never hurts himself doing it. Pulls the Bo Jackson. Two outs, it's Ryan Terrio. Strike one. Was chatting with his pitcher. Three on with two outs. Cubs still struggling with runners in scoring position. Oh for six tonight. Oh for twenty six in the series. By Biggio, the soft liner ends the inning. Make it seven stranded through four. Frustrations continue, three to nothing. After today, Timmy never referred to girls as icky again. Yeah, Timmy. Dare is in. Brought to you by Kohl's Department Stores. Kohl's, expect great things. Okay, class. If you're in the South, you say, Hey, feller, give me a Bud Light. Hey, feller, give me a Bud Light. In New York, you say, Hey, give me a Bud Light. You got a problem with that? Bud Light, you got a problem with that. In East L.A., you say, Give me a Bud Light, Holmes. Uh, give me a Bud Light, Holmes. More importantly, if somebody asks you for a Bud Light, you say... No speak English! Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Bud Light? Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. That's cold.
On Thursday, August 9th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. They've always brought you great rooms at great rates. And now, the experts at Hotels.com are the first to bring you flexible booking, which lets you change or even cancel your reservation without any fees from us. So you don't have to worry if your plans change. And with the lowest price guaranteed, you never have to worry about paying too much. That's what flexible booking is all about. Just log on or call our certified experts now to find out more. Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Still early, Astros three, Cubs nothing. They have had their chances tonight against Roy Oswald, but he has found a way to escape. Ramos Ramirez scratched right before game time with right wrist soreness. And they're already without Alfonso Soriano, so trying to find other ways to score runs. Bottom three for the Astros against Big Z. And Chuck Merriweather's been giving that low strike just about all night. Chuck Merriweather is a big tall guy back there behind the plate calling the balls and strikes and uh, it's been my experience that the taller umpires do call a lot of low strikes I think because it's a pitch that occasionally they almost have to guess whether it caught the bottom of the strike zone because if you'll notice Merriweather sits up very high behind the catcher and uh, doesn't really get a good look at that low pitch. Chuck's in his 16th year with the 2004 World Series born in Nashville, Tennessee. Former college first baseman. Foul tip strike one on Brad Ausmus. Brad Ausmus with 100 career stolen bases picked up the milestone theft on July 27th, the 21st catcher all time with 100 steals. Jason Kendall's on that list with 162. Roller right to Terrio. His second consecutive play. Make it three straight plays going back to the last of the third inning. Hey, Cup fans, don't forget to check out our baseball blog on WGNTV.com. On the blog tonight, I have a post about the importance of this game with Big Z on the mound. Game notes from our friends at Statsync and the return of Felix P.A. It's all on WGNTV.com. Click on the link for Len Bob's blog. There's also a link to our current podcast. Felix caught a 6 a.m. flight this morning. The shuttle has been very busy between Des Moines and wherever the Cubs have been. Hey, by the way, I had a chance to run into Cubs double-A manager of Tennessee, Pat Listash, who lives in the Houston area. Had an off day yesterday. He and his wife were in town. Saw him at the team hotel. And Like the Smokies are doing well, and Pat knows that it's already happened a couple of times this year. If uh, guys on his team do well, they're going to move up the chain, and they've done that already a bunch of times. Well, Not think, only to the big leagues, but to Triple A. And I think Pat Listash is another guy himself that will move up the chain. Well, I agree. He's a guy that's paid his dues, has done a nice job in every capacity that he's had in the minor leagues, and. I'm sure at some point in the near future we'll get his shot. Oswalt with a base hit through the hole on the left side. The sixth hit allowed by Zambrano. That was 15 years ago. Pat Listash was the American League Rookie of the Year, playing for Phil Garner in Milwaukee. Pretty good team that year. The strike on Vigio. Over 
Zambrano. Knocked down, but Vizio will reach. Probably a hit. I mean, we're in Houston. Of course it's a hit. It's got to be a hit. No? I'm going to call it an error. Okay. Christ, an error on the board. They oh. may change it, but Carlos just misses it with the glove, and when yeah. Fondo comes in tries to field it on a short hop, it looked like it hit off the heel of his glove. Ricochet back toward the infield. Yeah he, might, yeah, he had that base right in front of him. Yeah, he got a little ahead of himself. He was going to field that ball and go to the bag for the force out and just couldn't get it cleanly in the glove. Mike Lamb high in the air. For Jock Jones in left center right in front of the Cubs bullpen to make the catch. They strand two. They lead the Cubs three to nothing after four. Flying to Denver for business? If these six reasons don't convince you to fly Southwest Airlines nonstop to Denver, maybe this will. You can fly from Chicago Midway for just $79 one way. You are now free to move about the country. At Quiznos, chefs create our recipes, like the Steakhouse Beef Dip Sub, marinated roast beef, French onion sauce, and pan-roasted au jus. At Wrong Way, you just get the dip. Steakhouse flavors without the steakhouse. Quiznos, mmm, 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 toasty. It's time to feel free with Chase Freedom. Feel free to choose points for rewards like travel. I'm free to do what I want. Or feel free to choose cash back. Then feel free to change back again. Without losing a thing. That's freedom. That's Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. If a Cubs player hits a homer today, write down the distance and player's name and send it to WGN-TV. You can win two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. Saturday night on WGN, Ichiro and his West Coast crew are in for a Southside welcome, courtesy of Ozzy's Boys in Black. Sox, Mariners, Saturday night at 7 Eastern on Superstation WGN. George is back in the swing, Vegas style. <laughs> nice. George of the Jungle 2, Saturday at 3 Eastern. Hey, music fans, the Dave Matthews Band is coming to the Alpine Valley Music Theater August 25th and 26th, brought to you by Live Nation and part of the Bud Light Concert Series. Tickets are still available. Visit LiveNation.com or call Ticketmaster at 312-559-1212. Bud Light and DMB, always worth it. Whatever great way, should wash us all away, just thinking out loud. A three zip Astros. Jock Jones batting second tonight. We'll start it here in the fifth. The Cubs have been very good here in this ballpark. 33 and 31. All time since the park opened in 2000. They have never been swept here. The last time they were swept in Houston was in September of 1999 at the Astrodome. Shallow left, Carlos Lee's over, but actually Eric Brunton. Went a long way to make the catch. Yeah, Lee was shaded a little bit into the gap in left center, but Boy, Eric Brunla just comes streaking out from his shortstop position. And Carlos Lee does a lot of things well on the field. He is not running real well right now out there in the outfield defensively. We've seen him labor going into the gaps and toward the foul line when he's had to chase balls down out there and left. He also had a nasty collision with shortstop Adam Everett that put Everett on the DL with a broken leg. Foul 
tip on the heater at 96. One and two on lead. Oswald had his assignment a couple starts ago pushed back due to an upper chest strain. Last time out at Florida, he got the win. Six innings, one run. Was taken out after a rain delay. And the last time he faced the Cubs, it was his worst start of the year. July 14th, 10 hits, eight earned runs. And as Bob mentioned right off the top, since then just two earned runs over his last three starts. And he's 3 0 during that time. And he's almost unbeatable in this part. 60 and 19 in his career here at Minute Maid. Floyd next. Kick in the 2 2 pitch. Derek Lee with an inside out swing. And Luke Scott handles it in right. And then we've talked about the Astros and their ability the last couple of years to come back in the second half of the season. And the guy on the mound is. Uh, is a big part of that. He's 54 and 17 in 90 career starts in the second half of the season. That's about as close to a sure thing as you can get. He's from Ware, Mississippi. W E I R. And Oswald was not a highly sought after guy in the draft in 1996. He went in the 23rd round. He's become a two-time 20-game winner and a three-time All-Star. Well, I think uh, to a certain degree, Tim Lincecum with the San Francisco Giants owes a huge debt of gratitude to Roy Oswald for the success he's had. Lincecum, very similar build. He's not a big guy. Maybe would scare away some scouts, but yeah, because Oswald has proven you can pitch effectively at this level, even if you're not very big, Lincecum got a huge bonus. So Floyd strikes out and the Cubs go down very quietly in the fifth. It's the Astros three, the Cubs nothing. Perfect. All malt. Always perfect. All imported noble aroma hops. Together. Together in a classic European style brewing tradition. Back together. The beer brewed for connoisseurs. All malt makes all the difference. Experience the unmistakable taste of Nicola. Distinct by design. You're so funny. I love our family tradition. What's that? Where we pass our plates to the right. When did that become a family tradition? When you ordered that. <laughs> new shrimp caprese with grilled garlic herb shrimp or new grilled steak caprese. Two great new dishes at Olive Garden. I told you to come alone. I did. And who were they? Oh, that's my network. In case I should have to call someone. Really? You get service out here? That's amazing, because I'm always doing business out here. And I got to tell you, it's a crapshoot. You guys work down by the docks? A phone is only as good as the network it's on. And only America's most reliable will let you start with a test drive. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. So, Brooklyn style or Philly cheesesteak pizza? Hmm, big foldable slices or steak and cheese. Guys, Brooklyn or Philly? Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No, Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. The debate rages on. Brooklyn. Get a large one topping Brooklyn style or a medium Philly cheesesteak pizza for just $9.99. Call or get them online. American Idol Rewind, the Saturday Superstation WG. Home half of the fifth from Houston, Lance Berkman facing Carlos Zambrano, the Astros with three in the third inning. All the runs to this point. First pitch swinging, Jock Jones, high horse in it back, and he's going to watch it fly out. Lance Berkman just hit that ball a good 420 feet. Cut 
that's where the big boys hit him. His 20th. This ball is absolutely toasted to straightaway center field. Fastball middle of the plate down a little bit. And hits it out there over the 404 mark. Way up in the camera area out there in center field. Two and on Lee broke his bat as he grounds to third for DeRosa. Well, put yourself in Lou Pinella's shoes here, Bob, for a second. This team has dropped five of six. As Lou said, it's been, been odd. Uh, when the Brewers were playing their best baseball recently, the Cubs were matching them. And the Cubs kind of sit here, you know, half game out, tied a game out. They've been right there, but. With Alfonso Soriano out, a big time struggling offense, Lou doesn't like to have a lot of meetings. Do um, you think he's considering something like that? Would it help? Is it simply just a matter of having a big five run inning and then everybody can relax? Well, I would vote for the five run inning, and I'm sure Lou would too. I mean, he, he doesn't like to have meetings, as you said. And really, what can you say? You know, guys. Are trying you know the effort is there it's just that right now the results have been real tough to come by you know for me personally Len I look at this roster and on a given day Lou can put a lineup out there that has four or five maybe even six guys who are capable of stealing a base and uh, if you have the right matchup a pitcher on the mound that's a little slow to the plate a catcher behind the plate that's had trouble throwing out runners you just send a track team out there and you let them know before the ball game everybody's got the green light unless I tell you not to run and try to steal a ball game just to prove to yourself that there's more than one way to win a game and during the the winning part of the season that the Cubs have had they've won in a variety of different ways they've stolen bases they've sacrificed they've hit sack flies they've hit home runs but when you have trouble getting the bats going and driving the ball and driving in runs swinging the bats hey send the track team out there even at Coors Field well that's the interesting part is they're going to a ballpark where that is not normally espoused Although the home run numbers are down somewhat over what they used to be at Coors Field because of the humidor baseballs, but there's a lot of room in that outfield at Coors. You don't have to hit it over the fence to to get an extra base hit. If you've got a bunch of fast guys in the lineup, those balls in the gap can turn into triples in a hurry. You know, and you try everything as a manager. I mean, I'm sure Lou has racked his brain over the last couple of days here trying to figure out how to jumpstart this offense, as you mentioned. They canceled batting practice today. He thought maybe if the guys showed up a little bit later and just stretched and went out there and got after it, that would be something that would uh, help them break the bad rhythm that they were in the last two days. Well, they're going to have to score some runs. Going into Colorado, and then the Rockies played at 19 today. Swing and Lane went around. That ends the inning. Leadoff home run from Berkman, and it's four to nothing. In the tradition of great police dramas comes a show that's not even close to any of those shows. Slipped and poop. It's a crime. Never actually kicked a ball call. But they're cops. Reno 911 premieres September 14th on Superstation WGN. Thanks, folks. I gotta get going. Uh, Cindy, keep my plane ready a little later. We're not finished yet. Cindy, I got stuck on a client call. Cindy, something else just came up. Oh yeah. Hey, Cindy. Your plane is ready. Thanks, Cindy. You're the best. With so many convenient non-stop flights, you'll feel like you have your own company plane. You can count on Southwest Airlines to get you there on time with friendly customer service. You are now free to move about the country. When my doctor told me my high blood pressure may have led to my erectile dysfunction, I was surprised. 
But then he said there was something I could do. When I found out my diabetes could have led to my ED, I learned there was help. My doctor told me about Levitra. Levitra is clinically proven to work for men with ED, even those with high blood pressure or diabetes. Levitra is only for men healthy enough for sexual activity. If you have heart problems or are on alpha blocker therapy, talk to your doctor before taking Levitra. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing and stuffy or runny nose. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease in vision, stop taking Levitra and call your doctor right away. Doctors know Levitra helps treat ED, even in men with high blood pressure. And in men with diabetes. Over a million men just like me have already taken Levitra. You should talk to your doctor about Levitra. The more you know about ED, the more you'll want to know about Levitra. Lance Berkman with a long leadoff home run to stretch the Astros lead to four to nothing. Mark DeRosa is two for two tonight and now nine for 16 against Roy Oswald. Didn't mean to. Berkman will field and flip to Oswald. Well, we're down to the final 50 in the ultimate seventh Let inning stretch contest. And just to show you an example Let of the passion that has been displayed by Give Cub fans as part of the ultimate seventh inning game. stretch competition. Then Take a look at this video from one of the contestants who did not make the final the 50. Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes are out at the old ball game. That's Ward T from Crystal Lake, Illinois, also known as Ivy Man. I have no idea why. As a reminder, voting is going on now to help determine the 10 finalists. Five new videos will be posted each weekday from now until Friday, August 17th. Go to Cubs.com to cast your vote. Ivy Man. Okay. You think he went to an Ivy League school? I highly doubt it. Fontenot's strike one and one. Well, more cloud cover. Partly cloudy now inside Minute Maid Park. And that's not a good thing for the Cubs because that means they've set off the fireworks a couple of times. They did it prematurely last night on a double. Yeah, Brad Osmus hit a ball in the gap in left center field, and apparently whoever had their finger on the trigger of the fireworks thought the ball was over the yellow stripe, fired off the fireworks, and Osmus chugged into second base with a double. Well, since you were a right-handed hitter, I guess we'll we'll say a left-handed pitcher throwing that pitch. You, you can't give up on it, right? I mean, it starts way out of the strike zone, and I guess the idea with two strikes is you swing if you think it might catch a sliver of the zone. And a lot of times it's going to be an ugly-looking swing. We were talking earlier. You have three to four tenths of a second to make up a decision whether you're going to swing at a pitch or not. And when you see that ball leave the pitcher's hand and it is so far out of the strike zone, your tendency is to quit on it right away. And then when you see the break on the ball start heading for the corner, that's when you have to take some of those emergency swings that aren't real pretty, but just try to stay alive and get another pitch. Elevated to center, Jason Lane stopped immediately, but then uh, came in. We're talking about the fireworks here. I wish I could remember all the specifics. Mark Grace tells a great story about when he was playing first base and Rick Sutcliffe was pitching and I think he gave up back to back to back home runs at one point and uh, in the meeting on the mound uh, Sutcliffe was pleading his case to stay in the ball game and his manager told him I'm just giving the guy with the fireworks an opportunity to reload. <laughs> I guess it helps to have a sense of humor. Especially after you've given up back to back to back. Days Chuck Merriweather. Got him on that right shoulder. That was 
a padded area. It doesn't make it much better, but Chuck will shake it off and stay in the ball game. You know, Marty Foster the other night against the Mets he got hit in the mask and wasn't quite right. Mark O'Neill came out, Tim McClellan, the crew chief, but uh, Foster wanted to stay in. And apparently, from what I've heard, Major League Baseball was not real happy with that decision. Uh, you know, they're very careful about concussions, and the players are susceptible to that. As Merton drives one into the gap in right center, that'll get down for a base hit. And apparently, Marty Foster had a history of concussions, so uh, probably would have been better served to take the advice of the Cubs training staff and just come on out of that ball game. Tim McClellan, the crew chief. Uh, did everything in his power to try to get Marty Foster out of the game, but after a brief rest in the third base dugout or in the umpire's room on the third base side, he came back out to finish the ball game. Kick in the pitch. A strike on Hill. It's there for the taking if the uh, Cubs can come back. The Brewers lost today. So they have 55 losses. The Cubs have just 54, but they're two back in the win column. They'll make up one of those games in hand tomorrow. The Brewers flying in probably right as we speak. They'll have an off day here tomorrow. We'll open a three game set against the Astros Friday, and the Cubs will head to Denver to take on the Colorado Rockies four game series beginning tomorrow night. And we'll have games one and four right here on WGN Sports. Sobrano on deck to the called third with the bases loaded in the fourth inning and snapped his bat over his knee. There's a base hit into right. Merton's going to take a look at it and hold at second base. As much as the Cubs would like to knock Roy Oswald out of there, they haven't done much against the Astros bullpen either. Did get a run last night as Merton hit a home run off Dave Borkowski, but Chad Qualls and Brad Lidge have been almost unhittable in the series. So again, they look to Zambrano to come up with a big hit. Two on, two down. Now, Qualls and Lidge have each worked two innings in this series. They each have four strikeouts, including Lidge last night, one, two, three in the ninth. The pitch. Well, it's fun to watch, but you'd much prefer Carlos shorten up this swing a little bit. Just make some contact. As big and strong as he is, all he's got to do is get the barrel of the bat on the ball. He doesn't have to try to hit it over the scoreboard in right field. He's going to get his hacks in. 423 career plate appearances. He's walked five times. One and two now. Well, last time up, the frustration kind of boiled over for Carlos in the fourth inning. Took a call, third strike, and took the bat with him. Neil Scott in the middle of Osmus. Just got a piece of it to stay alive. What about staying alive? Finally, some reaction from the crowd here at Minute Maid Park. This is uh, the most noise we've heard in three games. Struck him out for the third time. It is still four to nothing, Astros.
Don't try this at home. Leave it to the comedy professionals. Home Improvement Weekdays. Weekdays at 5.30. No matter what the label looks like, no matter how you say it, one beer is the perfect choice at any corner bar in any corner of the world. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser. Open up a world of taste. It's time to feel free with Chase Freedom. Feel free to choose points for rewards like travel. I'm free to do what I want. Or feel free to choose cash back. I'm free. Then feel free to change back again. In the old town. Without losing a thing. That's freedom. Free. That's Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. Singles or doubles? Singles? Doubles? Singles? <laughs> Doubles. Singles. Prepare to be torn. The Cheeseburger Lovers Deal at DQ. Two cheeseburgers for $222 or two meaty double cheeseburgers for $333. Do them. On Thursday, August 9th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Every second counts on the award-winning series 24, Saturdays at 11.30 on Superstation WGN. Let's take a look at tonight's Honda Civic game summary. Mark DeRosa with a couple of hits. Derek Lee has had a patient night, 0 for 1, but he's walked twice. Carlos Zambrano with a walk, six strikeouts, but he's given up four runs and a couple of home runs. Biggio and Berkman, those killer bees tonight. It's tonight's Honda Civic game summary. Get performance and save gas. Test drive a new Civic at your Honda dealer today. You know, Len, with those two home runs that Carlos has surrendered tonight, he has now given up as many as he did all season last year in 33 starts. 20 homers. Going to pose Eric Bruntlett. Inside corner for a strike. Well, the baseball world talking about the big home run by Barry Bonds last night. Number 756. So he has the all time lead, and there was no doubt about it. He hit it off left hander Mike Bassick. But not into McCovey Cove. He hit it into the seats out in right center. It's touched off an unbelievable scrum out there in the bleachers in right center field. The gentleman that came up with it was wearing a Mets jersey. On his way to uh, Australia and uh, just happened to score some tickets to the ball game and was in the right place at the right time. Saw an A-Rod jersey out there too. And listening to the many interviews that Barry did after the game, it sounds like he has no interest in retiring after the season as Bruntlett takes ball four. And based on what Peter McGowan has said, you know, at this point, it sounds like the Giants are going to move on, which means he could end his career with a different team. Dave Borkowski is up. The left-hander Trevor Miller was up previously. Second walk given up by Zambrano. Very classy gesture by Hank Aaron. Absolutely. Big message on the scoreboard from Hank to Barry Bonds. Oh. And Ospis tried to bunt. I don't know if that ball hit him or not. I think it did. And this thing, he bunted at it? Yeah. Yeah. And they, they appealed down to first base. <laughs> Brad Osmus looked down to first. Rick Reed said he bunted. I think Osmus said he held up, so. Phil Garner's going to now ask the crew chief. Looked like Osmus thought Reed said he held up, and he was imploring Chuck Merriweather to look to first base, but he was saying, no, you, you bunted at it. On well, first look, I thought he pulled the bat back. We'll get another look at it here. It was late. Yeah, he came back late with the bat. That ball was already into the hitting zone before he started to pull the bat back. Looked like it caught him on the right arm. Just 
slid down his forearm and then ultimately got a piece of Coy Hill. I think they got it right. I mean, Rick Reed was signaling that he bunted at the ball before Chuck Merriweather even asked. That's how sure Rick Reed was that he bunted at that ball. Squares again. This time he gets it down. Hill will collect it. Fontenot covering first. After a brief rhubarb, Brad Osmus ultimately gets the bunt down in front of home plate. Good base running over there by Eric Brunlett. Got a good jump. No play for Coy Hill except to go on to Fondo at first base for the out. And now we're going to get a pinch hitter for Roy Oswald. I guess that would qualify as good news. Cubs are looking for any good news tonight, but Oswald done after six innings and 108 pitches. They were shut out frames tonight. Second front the back in plenty of time. Well, they're outing for Roy Oswald, not so much that he shut the Cubs out for six innings, but he walked as many as he struck out in this ballgame. Four strikeouts, three of those were Carlos Zambrano. Pinch hitters in the game today. Two and oh, the count. Tied for ninth on the all time pinch hit list. 116 in his career. Michael Wirtz, the right hander. The Cubs now with only one lefty in their bullpen after Will Oman was optioned out. And then Scott Ayer. Sean Gallagher returning to the big league club. Yesterday popped up off the end of the bat. DeRosa's over. At the top of the dugout. Obviously, I would have no way of knowing what it feels like to set the all-time home run record for the game of Major League Baseball. And uh, a lot of reporters, a lot of cameras, a lot of microphones. But I was a little perplexed by some of Barry's comments in the postgame. Especially the quote, I believe it was, I will ride and die with my teammates. I found that kind of puzzling for a guy that doesn't run out anything, hit on the ground. And as we've seen uh, over the course of the last couple of seasons, when he's taken out of the ball game late for defense, or if he's not going to get another bat in the ball game, you see him pick up his bats and his glove, and off he goes into the San Francisco night somewhere. Ride and die is a proper description of what he does with that ball club. But uh, like I said, who knows uh, when you're under that kind of microscope? Second walk of the inning. Biggio will bat. Jose Cruz Sr. Bat on the chest for Orlando Palmero. We talked about it throughout this series. You always have to watch the first pitch to Craig Biggio. First pitch of the game. First pitch every at bat after that. Looking to jerk that ball to left field. Good fastball on the outside corner. Not a pitch that Biggio could pull. By the way, Bonds is in the lineup tonight for the Giants. You know, it's really not over. Every home run he hits now will be a new record. Terrio to first dugout by Derek Lee. about as nice a play as you can make on that slow hit ball by Craig Biggio. 
It's a do or a die play, much like a third baseman barehanding that slow rolling bunt. Ryan just comes in, fields it on a short hop, gathers himself, and throws across. Another good pick over at first base by Derek Lee to get the out. Managers out on the mound. Left handed hitter do up, Mike Lamb. First base open. But Lance Berkman will be on deck. Time to have a ball with our friends at the Illinois Lottery. Quite the same as the uh, scrum for the Barry Bonds ball, but the kid getting it. He's flipped from Mike Quaddy. Nothing like those uh, foul ball souvenirs. In this intimate ballpark, and there's not much foul territory. Ten pitches for Zambrano as he faces Mike Lamb. Four to nothing, Houston, in the bottom of the sixth. If he doesn't retire, Lamb, there's a real good chance this is his last hitter of the ball game because of the pitch count, and also because of the fact switch hitting Lance Berkman in the on deck circle. We've talked about it through the first two games of this series. You like him up there from the right side if there's an opportunity to do some damage. He's a good hitter from both sides of the plate, but has a lot more power as a left-handed hitter. Foul ball. Coming a souvenir. The lefty made the play. And I'm sure he'll be studying all the scuff marks for the next three innings. Well, people around him weren't exactly impressed. That was a pretty nice play. Leaned out over the railing, made a nice backhand play on a short hop. Slicing fair, and the Astros will get two more to make it six to nothing as Mike Lamb. Throws home two. He took a couple of funny looking swings earlier in the sequence, but basically that's what he was trying to do. Take a Carlos Zambrano pitch and just guide it down into that left field corner, and he's able to do it here to drive home two more Astro runs. Well, Big Z in six July starts gave up six runs total. He's allowed six tonight, and he will exit with the Cubs trailing six to nothing. You know, testing my blood sugar is such a hassle. Mom, why not make your life easier? Try the Breeze 2 meter. It's the one I use because it has 10 tests in one disc, and I never have to code. Introducing the new Breeze 2 meter from Bear. With no coding and now a smaller blood sample and results in five seconds, it's easier than ever. Call 800-554-9393 or go online now to get your free Breeze 2 meter, a $65 value. That sounds a lot easier. That's easy accuracy. Answered by Bear. Hey, over here. Why don't you switch to our network? We're just like them. Are you reliable? Excellent question. How about for email or downloading music? Why not? A phone is only as good as the network it's on. That is a problem, and we are working on it. And only America's most reliable will let you start with a test drive. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Heartburn? Painful. Zantac. Okay. Better? Completely. Zantac's fast. Maximum strength Zantac after a meal quickly relieves heartburn. Dinner? Sure. Zantac. First. Prevents? Definitely. Zantac's fast. Maximum strength Zantac before a meal prevents heartburn. Heartburn? Yeah. Prescription? Slow. The leading prescription can take a day or more to fully work. Zantac. Better. Zantac's fast. For heartburn, why wait? Zantac's fast. Left-hander Scott Ayer takes over, and you, you look at how the Astros have gotten their runs. They've scored twice on home runs. 
Also a two run triple by Luke Scott and in this inning a two run double by Mike Lamb. Carlos walked three on the night. All three of those walks would come around to score. So Lance Berkman will turn around and hit right handed. With Lamb at second base. And two outs. Carlos's pitch count was a little more manageable. You, you just walk Berkman right here and go after Carlos Lee in the on deck circle, but the combination of the high pitch count and the switch hitting Berkman made this an easy move. There has a sign from Hill. Who slides toward the inside? And it's taken for ball one. Now I don't know if you can think of another stretch like this where you're playing bad and the team with you or just ahead of you is playing worse. But I recall a stretch uh, that Florida had in 2003. They had a one and eight trip, and the Philadelphia Phillies, a team they were battling for the wild card, went one and nine during that same stretch. So they picked up a half game in the standings. <laughs> I mean, it can't happen, and that was in late August. We sit here in early August. Doesn't make you feel any better because eventually you have to take care of your own business. And it's been a it's been a strange week, and I'm sure Ned Yost feels the same way about his team. I'm sure he's saying, you know, the Cubs can't win. We can't put any breathing room in between. Well, we were talking about it on the way home from the ballpark last night. The biggest difference for me has been when the Cubs were playing good it didn't really matter what the Brewers did yep. you felt like they were going to win every ball game it was up to the Brewers to keep up you didn't really even have to watch the scoreboard but now you start sputtering a little bit offensively there's some doubt as to you know which team are we the one that started the season or the one that's played the last month and a half and uh, and now you start taking a look at that out of town scoreboard a little more often to see what's happening with the, the team that the Cubs are battling with. You know, one thing that's happened here the last few days that has changed the dynamic is they're without their superstar leadoff hitter. I don't know if Soriano had been in the lineup if the Cubs would have scored a bunch of runs in this series or not, but they really don't have any choice. They're going to be without him for about a month. And I think everybody agreed that this team is much better equipped to handle the loss of one of their all-star players than last year's club that played without Derek Lee for all but 50 games. Well, and even though Soriano has shown this year that he can be very streaky, he can be really, really good for stretches of time, and then he can kind of turn invisible for stretches of time, but his mere presence at the top of that order forced the respect of the other manager the other pitching staff they had to deal with him at least four or five times a ball game and that changed the entire uh, complexion of the game just because he was in the lineup whether he was hot or not and in two of these three games last night and again tonight the Cubs without a Ramos Ramirez just got a day last night as Berkman walks and a sore right wrist keeping him out of the lineup tonight. Two out of three with a double and a run. Without Will Oman on this current roster, the Cubs really don't have a matchup lefty. Scott Ayer is not a guy you're probably going to bring in very often to face one hitter. But they do have some right handers who get out lefties now. Ayer never got off the mound. He might have slipped a little bit, but he didn't even make a move toward first base after the slip, and the bases are loaded. Nothing will chap a manager worse 
on something like this, an opportunity to get out of the jam. Scott Air caught spectating out there on the mound. Talk about how Carlos Lee, uh, as good a player as he is, he has not been running that well lately, but he could break it down about halfway to first base and just glide in there with an infield hit. Ball one on Luke Scott. That was a base hit for Carlos Lee, his seventh in a series. And around too far on a slider. Works is ready if needed. It comes again and blocked by Coy Hill. Not adding up to two and one. Cardinals leading. The seventh at home, two to one over San Diego. The Reds edge the Dodgers one to nothing in Cincinnati. Aaron Harangs now 11 and three. And the Dodgers have lost six in a row. They're down to fourth place in the National League West. Scott has to throw a strike to Scott. That's Luke Scott. The three one. Now three and two. Everybody on the move here on the full count pitch with two outs. a 3-2 and he forced in a run for the bases loaded walk. That run will be charged to Zambrano. So Lou Pinella making another change, seven to nothing. No matter what the label looks like, no matter how you say it, one beer is the perfect choice at any corner bar in any corner of the world. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, open up a world of taste. Flying to Denver for business? If these six reasons don't convince you to fly Southwest Airlines nonstop to Denver, maybe this will. You can fly from Chicago Midway for just $79 one way. You are now free to move about the country. an idea.
Boy Confessional covering in a big country. Of course, originally done by Big Country, 1983. Tonight's Bud Light fan cam, always worth it. Got that mustache, that first shot of the fan cam. Pretty good look for it. Yosemite Sam. Well, base is still loaded. Michael Ward's trying to get out of this sixth inning. Jason Lane to short. They'll get the out at second base. And finally, it's over. Three more for the Astros. Seven to nothing after six. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Pepsi. Your world, your Pepsi. We're up to a million hits. Sweet. Who is it? Chuck Norris. Yeah, right. Maybe better ways to spend 15 minutes online. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. There may be better ways to spend 15 minutes online. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Heartburn? Painful. Zantac. Okay. Better? Completely. Zantac's fast. Maximum strength Zantac after a meal quickly relieves heartburn. Dinner? Sure. Zantac? First. Prevents? Definitely Zantac's fast. Maximum strength Zantac before a meal prevents heartburn. Heartburn? Yeah. Prescription? Slow. The leading prescription can take a day or more to fully work. Zantac. Better. Zantac's fast. For heartburn, why wait? Zantac's fast. <laughs> Dog River is a small town with big laughs. Watch Corner Gas, premiere September 17th, exclusively on Superstation WGN. Lennon Bob and our WGN sports crew from Houston, Texas. It's been all Astros tonight, seven to nothing. Right-hander Dave Borkowski now on to work. Ontario, the leadoff man, is leading off for the second time tonight. Paul Merrill stays in and plays left, so Borkowski inserted into the cleanup spot. Carlos Lee done. Base hit to right to begin the inning. Well, the Cubs have scored three runs in this series. One of those came against Dave Borkowski last night. He came in in relief of Woody Williams, gave up a couple of hits and a run. Good start to the inning for Ryan Terry. Cubs with seven hits, six singles, and a double. Get you the lines on the starting pitchers here after this first offering to Jock Jones. Roy Oswald, six innings, six hits, no runs, four walks, four strikeouts. Carlos Zambrano, five and two thirds, eight hits, seven runs. They were all earned, three walks, six Ks. The uh, seven runs. Tying a season high. Gave up seven against the White Sox on May 20th. Also gave up seven in Atlanta, but six were earned. Fair ball. Terry all the way to third. Scott plays the carom. Jones with a sliding double. Second and third, no outs. So the Cubs showing some life finally against this Astros pitching staff. Two in scoring position for Derek Lee. 
Pitch down and in. Jock got the top half of the ball, but fortunately hit it hard down that first baseline past Lance Berkman into right field. Berkman wasn't even holding on Ryan Terrio, but he was playing right behind him, which really limited his range, allowed that ball to get down into the corner. Got to snap the over with runners in scoring position. It's now over 28 in the series. Astros just want it out. They're back all around the infield. As the Cubs try to break the shutout. Breaking ball misses away. Two and one. Now throughout the first two games of this series uh, Phil Garner has really leaned heavily on Qualls and Lidge. They both pitched an inning in each of the first two games. Borkowski with an inning but uh, a lot of activity down there in that bullpen. He will expend the rest of his relievers if he has to to stop the Cubs offensively here before turning the ball over to his setup guy and his closer. Reportedly, there was a lot of interest in both Qualls and Lidge, along with Mark Loretta, Mike Lamb, but uh, the Astros held on to those guys, at least for now. They did trade Dan Wheeler for Ty Wigginton. They also moved Morgan Ensberg. Derek Lee grounds out to third. A run scores to make it 7 1. RBI number 60 for Lee. playing back all the way around the infield conceding that run they'll trade a run for an out with a seven run lead Terrio off on contact he'll score easily you see Brad Osmus the Astros catcher pointing toward first base letting Lamb know that we just want to get the out over there don't worry about that runner coming home Phil Garner will take the ball from Borkowski Trevor Miller will come in to face Cliff Floyd when we come back seven to one Houston. Is Dave Chappelle. Really? He's Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods. For Shizzle. Rick James. <laughs> Lil John. Okay. Blackzilla. A Black Klansman. A Milkman. Tron Carter. Silky Johnson. Gallagher Prince. <laughs> and he's the host of the wildest, baddest, funniest, most outrageous show on television. It's a celebration. <laughs> Chappelle's show is coming to late night. Premiere September 14th on Superstation WGN. When your in-home disasters become America's biggest laughter, we've got it all caught on tape. Every weeknight, you get all the hilarious moments of AFE. Even when things go extremely wrong, laughter makes it oh so right. It's the cranks, pranks, and all-out stupid maneuvers that make Monday nights a splash. Join Tom Bergeron as he brings you the ultimate in reality television. Common sense is the enemy of comedy. My new motto, stop thinking, start taping. It's a knockdown, flipped around good time. So when life gets a little crazy, remember to take some time to laugh. America's Funniest Home Videos, weeknights at 7 Eastern on Superstation WGN. It's great to be home. Southpaw Trevor Miller will face Cliff Floyd. The Cubs getting their first run tonight. They're still trailing by six. Jock Jones is at second base. Cliff's 0 for 3. Double play, a fly out, and a strikeout. Side armor, Trevor Miller, ball one. He's been really good lately. 
That's his numbers on the season. He's held lefties to a 232 batting average this season. No runs allowed in his last 16 outings, spanning 13 innings. Here at Minute Maid Park to bring in a left-handed specialist to work on a left-handed hitter. He immediately falls behind 3-0. Ah. 4-0. He takes the walk. Oh, managers hate that, don't they? They set it all up. They, they play the matchups. They bring a guy into. Maybe face one or two hitters, and then you'll walk them with a six run lead. So Matt Albers is now up along with Qualls. Cubs need a big swing. You asked for the uh, three run homer earlier, and they could really use it here back into this game. Miller continues to miss the strike zone. Five pitches, five balls. away you think about a team and again without Soriano Bob but which should be a power hitting team the Cubs have one home run in this series and not one has gone into the Crawford boxes the ball Merton hit was off the facing out in left center as inviting as it is out there in left the Cubs haven't found it yet Cliff Floyd hit one foul near that area the other night and this one's going to die in the glove of Orlando Palmero for the second out. Part of it is due to the, the Astro pitching staff. They, they know what danger lurks out there in left field if they make a mistake on the inside part of the plate to a right handed hitter. We haven't seen a lot of pullable pitches on the inside part of the plate, especially to the big right handed hitters in the Cubs lineup. Veteran pitching coach Dave Wallace. Well, that's a great point. And really goes back to that at bat we have talked about a couple of times in this series it was game one when Bob Howie was facing Carlos Lee in the bottom of the ninth he wasn't going to come anywhere near the inner half of the plate he got him to fly out on a 3 0 pitch to right you just can't mess around against guys like Carlos Lee unless you get it way in. Well, this ballpark here in Houston and the ballpark that the Cubs will play in tomorrow night in Colorado this entire road trip as long as you have outs left in the ball game, you've got a chance because of the short porch in left field because of the deep gaps in right center and left center and in cores obviously because of the altitude as long as you have outs left in the ball game, you still have an opportunity to come back and tie or win a game. the outside corner two and two on Fontenot with Merton on deck the next one pulled it low and away three and two and Alley's shot will drive in two Berkman charges and steps on first base to end the inning. They'll stretch here in Houston. Cubs get one. It's now 7-1. Who is Dave Chappelle? Really? He's Rick James. 
Lil John, Blackzilla, a Black Klansman, a Milkman, Tron Carter, Silky Johnson, Gallagher Prince. <laughs> Chappelle's show is coming to late night. Premiere September 14th on Superstation WGN. That's why Southwest Airlines has eight daily nonstop flights from Chicago Midway to Philadelphia, so you can always catch a later flight. And you can count on us to get you there with our convenient non-stop flights and on-time service. You are now free to move about the country. Yo, oye mamita, no me tomes el pelo. Tú con tanta curva, mira yo sin freno. Wiki, wiki. <laughs> what? You told me to bring you a wrap with a little spice. Yeah. Wrap, not wrap. Oh! The wrap you're looking for is the new Chipotle barbecue snack wrap. It's a snack wrap you love, but a little spicier, because it has Chipotle barbecue sauce over juicy and tender chicken breast meat. R -r 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 Rico! I told you to come alone. I did. Who are they? Oh, that's my network. In case I should have to call someone. Really? You get service out here? That's amazing, because I'm always doing business out here, and I gotta tell you, it's a crapshoot. You guys work down by the docks? A phone is only as good as the network it's on. And only America's most reliable will let you start with a test drive. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Deep in the heart of Texas. Let's take a look at our upcoming Cubs and Sox high-definition broadcast schedule sponsored by Comcast. Sox hosts Seattle Saturday at 6 on WGN Sports. Cubs back in HD from Wrigley Field next Wednesday, August 15th at 7 on WGN Sports. And a week from tomorrow against the Reds, 1 o'clock with the award-winning leadoff man show, 2007 Cubs and Sox Baseball in HD, sponsored by Comcast. Eric Bruntlett pops it up behind the plate. Not a lot of room and drops beyond the net. And I would say... 29 other parks that's an out <laughs> real short run to the backstop here at Minute Maid Park and that ball landed in the area where we normally see former President George Bush sitting occasionally Drayton McLean the owner of the ball club will sit right down there in the front row with a 1-1 pitch popped up on a fastball back out of play Bruntlett began the three run sixth with a walk Eventually spell the end of the night for Carlos Zambrano as Bruntlett and Palmero would score on a two-run double by Mike Lamb, and that sent Zambrano to the showers. Slider in the dirt. Full count. Well, the uh, pitching matchups for the upcoming series. Left-hander Ted Lilly will start it tomorrow night against hard-throwing right-handed rookie Ubaldo Jimenez. Nice play by Mark DeRosa. Pulls it out of his back pocket and throws to first. That was a nifty play and a very tough hop. time about making adjustments most of the time we refer to making adjustments at the plate but sometimes defensively you have to make quick adjustments when that ball doesn't do what you expect it to do that time DeRosa stays with it and gets easy out across the diamond at first Brown Osmus with one out 
Swing and a miss on Friday. Jason Marquis and Aaron Cook. Again, if you like sinker ballers, that'll be your night. Left hander Rich Hill, right hander Josh Fogg on Saturday night. And then left hander Sean Marshall for the Cubs Sunday. And Jason Hirsch listed, but again with a broken leg. I doubt he's going to be on the active roster come Sunday. So we'll just say that's a TBD to be determined for the Rockies on Sunday. That's high. Well, Eric Patterson had his first major league start last night. Uh, bloop single out in the left center. He essentially got the ball. Comes assistant trainer Ed Halbert currently in possession of it because Eric said, if I had it right now, I'd probably lose it. <laughs> the younger brother of Corey Patterson. Ed made his big league debut a couple of nights ago. Second baseman by trade, but he's here to help in left. With Alfonso Soriano on the DL. Some Kendall and Rich Hill talking about things. They're probably talking about why in the world are people in Houston doing the way? I thought this was done. He said, I mean, they've been doing it for 15 years. And, you know, for something else. I'll tell you, though, the most creative wave I ever saw was the Tiger Stadium. You would think they passed out instruction sheets to the fans. They would start it in center field and go both directions. It was the most amazing thing you've ever seen as far as waves at the ballpark go. And then there would be times when everybody sitting in the center field and right and left center field bleachers would give the traveling sign like in basketball. Boy, did that look weird. Then they put their hands above their heads and wave them back and forth. And when you get entire sections of the ballpark doing that, it's uh, quite an optical illusion. Now, did you notice these things when you were behind the plate? No, the this, this, I was just faint. Oh, okay. Brad Osmus finds the aforementioned Crawford boxes. Third home run for the Astros. Now eight to one. Rossmus, that's his third of the season. He doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but when he does, he pulls them to left field, and this one safely tucks about halfway up into the Crawford box in left field. New home run record. The previous record was held for one day. Barry Bonds with number 757. Two run shot off Tim Reddick. So I guess if you catch a Barry Bonds home run now, you have to think about how long you want to hang on to it. Jones will gather it in. There's the, uh, the memorabilia experts out there, I guess they're saying uh, anywhere between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars for number seven fifty six. But that was before Bonds connected again tonight. venture to guess that the one that's going to be worth the most money is the last one whenever that is of course, how do you know now the other question is are they still using those specially marked balls when bonds bats and will they do that until his career ends 
You know, Major League Baseball has an issue with the pace of game, and I would have to believe that changing baseballs for every Barry Bonds at bat the rest of his career is going to uh, slow the games down considerably. Cameras are out with Craig Biggio at the plate. If this score holds up, he'll have the game winning RBI for the second straight night. His solo home run in the third inning put the Astros up. up in the bullpen. This would have been his night to start at Triple A Iowa. The Little Bulls. Bizio fans and the inning is over. Brad Osmus for his third home run of the year. It's eight to one. Houston. You're messing with the wrong guy. We're up to a million hits. Sweet. Who is it? Chuck Norris. Yeah, right. style or Philly cheesesteak pizza? Hmm, big foldable slices or steak and cheese. Guys, Brooklyn or Philly? Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No, Philly. Brooklyn. Philly. Brooklyn. The debate rages on. Brooklyn. Get a large one topping Brooklyn style or a medium Philly cheesesteak pizza for just $9.99. Call or get them online. It's time to feel free with Chase Freedom. Feel free to choose points for rewards like travel. I'm free to do what I want. Or feel free to choose cash back. I'm free. Then feel free to change back again. In the old without losing a thing. That's freedom. That's Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. I love our family tradition. What's that? Where we pass our plates to the right. When did that become a family tradition? When you ordered that. <laughs> new shrimp caprese with grilled garlic herb shrimp or new grilled steak caprese. Two great new dishes at Olive Garden. Superstation WGN is your home for big league baseball. So come on home. The Astros have hit three solo home runs tonight. And the other big hits, a two-run triple by Luke Scott, two-run double by Mike Lamb. They also had a bases-loaded walk. Scott with three RBIs. Matt Albers now does the pitching. His last outing was a start at Florida Sunday. Went four and a third, gave up five runs, and suffered the loss. Averaging better than a hit, an inning pitched. Be the first look for the Cubs at Matt Albers. We'll face Matt Merton to begin the eighth. If you just joined us, the Brewers were blasted in Colorado today, 19 to four, pulling the Cubs to within a half game of the NL Central lead. They're trailing by seven here in Houston. If the Cardinals hang on at home against San Diego, they will draw within six.
the glove of Albers. The throw is going to be late. Burton's on with an infield hit. Getting the leadoff man on has not been a problem for the Cubs. That's the fifth time in eight innings they've been able to get the leadoff man on base. Unfortunately, they've only been able to push across one run. Change for the Astros, along with Albers. Chris Burks in for Burke, uh, Biggio. Pulled foul by Coy Hill. There's a double switch. Hey, hey. Albers in the first spot. Burke, number four. Pinch hitter Felix P.A. Bats. We want to tell you about Saturday, August 18th. It's Empire Carpet Day at Wrigley Field. The Cubs will battle the Cardinals at 255. The first 10,000 fans will receive an Empire Today man bobblehead dial compliments of Empire Today. Empire Today is proud to be the official carpet of the Chicago Cubs. Top prospect, Felix P.A. Broke his bat. That ball took Berkman towards second. They'll get one out there, and that's it. That's where it helps to be a left-handed throwing first baseman. That ground ball just led him right to the bag, towards second base, rather. That explodes on Felix P.A. with his speed. He's going to leg out that relay throw to first base with no problem. This is just an easy play for a left-handed throwing first baseman. Just a little toss onto the shortstop for that lead out. So PA is on base in his third stint with the big league club here in 07. Astros are going to play behind Felix PA over there with a comfortable seven-run lead. They don't figure him to uh, be stealing. His number is not that good. 216, talking about Felix in the big leagues. But how about this? The Cubs with a 32 and 16 mark in games in which PA has appeared. Outside. Man, that's the bottom line. I mean, you take a whole roster full of guys hitting 216 if you win two out of every three all season long. Take second because the Astros are going to give it to him. And instead of SB, you can write DI, defensive indifference, which uh, we both loathe. He stole second base. Give him a steal. And they start inventing things. You know, the pitcher hangs a breaking ball and the guy hits it for a home run. No, that, let's call that an error on the pitcher instead of a home run. He made a bad pitch. Palmero circling. He can't get it as he falls to the ground. PA scores a circuitous route by Orlando Palmero. And Ryan Terrio picks up. The RBI hit to make it eight to two. Well, Palmeiras played a lot of outfield, but his main value to this ball club is as a pinch hitter. Yeah, he just took a real bad line for that ball and then lost his footing when he tried to readjust right there and come back in. Just missed the diving catch. Hunter Pence on the disabled list with the Astros. Terry will take second. And indifference again. Oh, 
So that's the first hit the Terry will hit to left center with a man in scoring position in this series for the Cubs. They began the series 0 for 31. For Carlos Zambrano, coupled with some more offensive struggles, Cubs find themselves down six late. Big Z did not get through six, allowing seven to score. And Roy Oswalt dealt six shutout innings. No Soriano, he's on the DL. No Ramirez out tonight with right wrist soreness. Two and one. Chad Qualls, who's been dealing in this series, is ready in the pen. Luke Scott over. Derek Lee with new life, two and two. You know, Derek Lee got a rare pitch up over the heart of the plate right there. Was a little bit tardy with the foul ball down the right field line. That's one of the few. Good pitches D. Lee has had to swing at in this series. Bouncer to short for Bruntlett. Burke covering second base. Cubs get one, but they're down big. Eight to two, bottom eight. Just because I'm a foster kid doesn't mean I'm a lost cause. I have the potential for greatness. Some people have an attitude about me because my parents have problems. Give me a chance. Do something to help me make it. Make foster care better. Don't write me off. Foster kids are our kids. Have you enjoyed a Budweiser lately? Because I can only describe the smoothness you'll get from Beechwood Aging. I can only tell you about the choicest hops. But if you really want to understand what makes Budweiser the king of beers, you have to taste it. Just taste it. The perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser. Open up a world of taste. Thursday, August 9th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. They've always brought you great rooms at great rates. And now, the experts at Hotels.com are the first to bring you flexible booking, which lets you change or even cancel your reservation without any fees from us. So you don't have to worry if your plans change. And with the lowest price guaranteed, you never have to worry about paying too much. That's what flexible booking is all about. Just log on or call our certified experts now to find out more. Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Ryan Terrio with three more hits tonight, six in the series, but his team down eight to two here in game three. Hey, Chicago baseball fans, there's still time to enter Pepsi's Fan Can Contest. Here's the deal. Only true baseball fans have the passion to customize a Pepsi can. Show us your team's colors. Design a Pepsi Fan Can that celebrates either the Cubs or the Sox. To decorate your fan can to honor your team, send a photo, not the can, to WGN TV. Pepsi Fan Can at 2501 West Bradley Place, Chicago 60618. To enter, you must be a resident of either Illinois or Northwest Indiana. Rookie right hander Sean Gallagher will take over here in the eighth. As you mentioned, Len, this would have been his regular day to start if he were still in the minor leagues. This is the long guy Lou Pinella has been asking for. A lot of one inning pitchers in that Cubs bullpen. And looking for somebody to come up here and eat up innings when that starter runs into trouble early. Finds himself pitching here in the bottom half of the eighth inning just to get an inning of work. 
Hey Bob, a couple of notes here is uh, Mike Lamb batting against Sean Gallagher. Got a great note from Dorothy Christopher in Lafayette, Indiana. She's been a Cub fan since 1932. I also want to wish Iria Haka a happy belated 90th birthday. Also a longtime Cub fan. We got a great letter from Stephen Hathaway in Panama City Beach, Florida, Chicago native, retired from the U.S. Air Force. And happy birthday to Carm Jordan in Florida. It's from your little sister Ellie in North Dakota. Thinking maybe summer in North Dakota, winter in Florida. I think that's probably the way to do it. Two and two, the count. Gallagher snapped off a couple of nice curveballs here already to the first batter he's faced. Comes inside with a fastball at 94 there. Well, he said he went down to Iowa and became aggressive again and. This charge here is to not pitch away from contact, which is a natural thing to do for a young pitcher at this level. Larry Rothschild wants him to be aggressive. Good curveball gets a ground ball to third. DeRosa throws to Lee. And what you discover sometimes with young pitchers, they're not necessarily pitching to a batter, they're pitching to a baseball card. Jesus. Craig Biggio, that's Albert Pujols, that's Barry Bonds, you know. It's not just a hitter. It's somebody that they've watched on TV recently uh, as they were playing in the minor leagues, and now all of a sudden they're out there on the mound and have to pitch to the guy. Once you get over that hump and realize, as long as I execute my pitches, it doesn't matter who the hitter is. They have weaknesses just like minor league hitters have weaknesses, and you just have to go right at them. And also the idea that, hey, there's a reason I was called up. There's always probably that one moment where you say to yourself, okay, I feel like I belong here. I think sometimes that moment comes when you make a mistake. When you throw a fastball right down the middle on a 2 and 0 count, the guy pops it up. Well, hitters are, are human too. One of the elite guys in the National League just made an out against Gallagher. Lance Burton. While we have a chance, let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Sports mishaps and mayhem that's all caught on tape. Whacked Out Sports premieres September 16th on Superstation WGN. Chris Burke batting with two outs. His first and possibly only at bat tonight. Hit one of the biggest home runs in Astros history in the 2005 Division Series, Game Four. Walk off solo shot to left off Joey Devine of the Atlanta Braves in the 18th inning. That ended the longest game in postseason history. And sent the Astros to the championship series. Also made a winner out of Roger Clemens, who pitched three scoreless innings in emergency relief. Stay tuned. The news follows the game. Speaking of Roger Clemens, did you see what he did last night? <laughs> Got a little chippy. Yeah. The Blue Jays and the Yankees have had their uh, share of square dances already this year. Just got away from them. Yeah. Just slipped. And to the best of my knowledge, it all goes back to A-Rod when he was rounding the bases with two outs on that pop-up to the left side of the infield. And it's disputed what he actually said, but uh, he appeared to be calling for the ball. And the Blue Jays infielder separated. The ball dropped. Floyd going back on this deep fly to right, and that'll be a double. It's the track, ends up in the seats.
fly ball to right field, but you really got to blast it to hit it out of here to the opposite field in this ballpark unless you put it right down the line. Another long run for Cliff Floyd. This time the ball hits off that hard warning track and easily bounces up into the seats for a book rule double. Night for Luke Scott. Three RBIs. Two on a triple, the other one on a walk with the bases full. The Reds blanking the Dodgers. They, the Dodgers have now been shut out in three straight games. And four out of five. The first time they have been shut out three straight times since 1966. Got swept by Baltimore in the World Series that year. And did not score in the final three games of the Fall Classic. Also shut out three straight in late April in 66. <laughs> Reading the recap. Good quote from Grady Little. Uh, as Scott walks, he was talking about Aaron Harang and uh, Dick Pohl, who's 56, walk out of the uh, bullpen before the game. The yeah, quote from Grady Little in the recap said, I uh, saw a couple of big men walk through the gate, and either one of them could have shut us out tonight. Ooh, ooh. Gee, ouch. Yeah, that's the kind of stretch of the season that uh, will keep hitting coaches up at night trying to figure out what in the world happened. Looking for the third out here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Got the first two rather quickly. Ground out to third, ground out to short. The labor here looking for the final out. Well, I'll tell you, Coy Hill, we've talked a lot about Brad Osmus in this series and his ability to block balls in the dirt. Uh, it'd be pretty tough to find somebody that does it better than Coy Hill. Solid, solid defensive catcher. Hit hard on a bounce. Terrio will flip to Fontenot's double play partner, and the inning is over. Astros lead two. It's eight to two as we go to the night. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With more flights to more places than ever before, Southwest is taking low fares even farther. Visit Southwest.com. With convenient flights every day, Southwest Airlines gives you the freedom to do business out of town and still come home at night. Winston, I'm home! Fly one of Southwest's eight daily nonstops from Chicago Midway to the San Francisco Bay Area for just $99, including new service to San Francisco International starting August 26th. You are now free to move about the country. At Quiznos, chefs create special sauces for our subs at Wrong Way. Mustard? Mayo? Quiznos has the steakhouse beef dips up with pan-roasted au jus. Au jus. Steakhouse flavors without the steakhouse. Quiznos. Mmm, 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 toasty. Life with diabetes? It's about staying ahead. That's why my new meter is Contour. It has no coating for fewer steps, which means... No slowing down. <laughs> so life is pretty good. Let's go. Life with diabetes? It's about going for it. That's why my new Contour has all the stuff I need to get it done right in just five seconds. The new Contour meter from Bear is the most complete meter yet. It has all the features you need in just five seconds. So... Getting more just got easier. Make your new meter the Contour meter from Bear. That's easy accuracy. Answered by Bear. Do you have Serpico? It's a movie with Al Pacino. 
Well, I saw Serpico. Plays a cop. Fights corruption on the force. How does it end? I think he gets shot in the head. Or he turns into a blind guy who smells women. Either way, we don't have the movie. <laughs> the wildest, baddest, most outrageous show on television is coming to Late Night. This is a celebration. Chappelle's Show premieres September 14th. Rally cap time. The Cubs need a bunch. Trailing by six as we begin the ninth. Veteran right-hander Brian Moeller is on for the Astros. And he'll face Cliff Floyd, Mark DeRosa, and Mike Fontenot. Cubs staring at their first sweep ever in this park. League has hit 304 against Moeller so far this season. I just don't believe that uh, Phil Garner is going to let him get into too much trouble out there. Well, we mentioned he may use the rest of the bullpen leading up to Qualls and Lidge to finish it out if necessary, but I don't think he's going to let this thing get too far out of hand here in the ninth inning before we see uh, some of his legitimate late inning relievers. Here's Cliff Floyd. Ball one. Cubs have stranded 13 tonight. And at least two in five innings. It was third, fourth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Including leaving them loaded in the fourth. Frustrating series for Cub fans here in Texas. DeRosa playing third tonight. Two for four. Both hits coming off Roy Oswald. Who would get the win? Looking ahead to the Rockies series, Todd Helton had to leave the game today. A precautionary measure, and he had back spasms. They took him out in the third inning. They were leading at the time 10 to nothing. Probably overextended himself high fiving teammates. That'll be a base hit for Cliff Floyd. Lead off single. And now it's DeRosa. Hard ground ball back up the middle of the field for Cliff. Cubs still grinding here in the top half of the ninth inning. Sure, if Ramirez is available to pinch hit, I would imagine if the situation called for it, uh, we could use Aramis in a pinch hitting role here late. But it's going to have to do a little more work before that becomes a reality. Foul tip, strike one. The Cubs are out hitting the Astros 12-11, so that indicates how many opportunities they've had tonight. It hasn't translated into many runs. Just two. Give them five in the entire three game series. Push D row off the plate, one and one. Well, the uh, last place team in the Central, the Pirates, leading the first place team in the West, the Diamondbacks, 5 4 in the fourth inning at Chase Field. And that was the return of Young Young Kim to the Arizona Diamondbacks, where he pitched so effectively as a closer for me and others, and uh, picked up on a waiver claim this week and in the Diamondbacks rotation. And he's out five earned runs and two and a third for PK. So 
is short. They get it out at second, and a second one at first. Ooh, I don't like to see that sign. No. Well, we sound like a broken record, but Milwaukee did lose today, and it's going to keep the Cubs within a game. But a golden opportunity. And to pass by the Cubs again. It'll be four straight losses for the Brewers and four straight for the Cubs. And this will do it as Burke throws to Berkman. And for the first time ever, the Cubs are swept in a three-game series here at Minute Maid Park. Not a good start to a very challenging road trip, and the Cubs now will move on to Colorado where the Rockies have been just about as good as anybody in all of baseball. They have won nine straight home series, so this is not going to be easy. The Brewers off tomorrow before they start a series here on Friday. You can only hope the Astros stay hot. Eight to the final. Next on WGN News, demanding to be heard, things heat up when people upset over the shooting of a teenager take their complaints to the police station. Politics does not pay after all. Who's not getting a paycheck because of the stalled budget and what steps they're taking to pay their bills? Flooded golf courses and funnel clouds in the skies. Tom Skilling says there is no calm before this storm. Just more on the way. Caution, professional tool man at work. He's fully trained to handle dangerous situations. Like three kids, one wife, and now. Remember, don't try this at home. Home Improvement, weekdays. Weekdays at 5.30 on Superstation WGN. Before you order your next beer, consider this. Budweiser still goes to the expense of Beechwood Aging. An original old world style of lagering. And Budweiser cares enough to own and maintain world-renowned hop farms. A perfect choice in every corner bar in every corner of the world. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser. Open up a world of taste. It's time to feel free. With Chase Freedom. Feel free to choose points for rewards like travel. I'm free to do what I want. Or feel free to choose cash back. I'm free. Then feel free to change back again. In the old town. Without losing a thing. That's freedom. Free. That's Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. At eHarmony, we match you across 29 dimensions of compatibility. And right now, not only can you log on to eHarmony.com and get your personality profile, you can also review your matches all for free. Aren't you curious to see who you would be matched up with according to compatibility? He loves me for me. Visit eHarmony.com and discover what so many singles have found. Log on today and review your eHarmony matches absolutely free. eHarmony.com. For the Houston Astros, eight runs, 11 hits, no errors, 10 stranded. For the Cubs, two runs, 12 hits, one error, 13 left. Roy Oswalt, the winner, he's 12 and six. It's been a while since Carlos Zambrano's lost to the Astros, but he drops to 14 and eight. Three hours, seven minutes in front of 41,655. Craig Vigio with a go-ahead RBI single last night. He had the go-ahead home run tonight, our bud play of the game. What do you call that thing when somebody hits a ball in the seats? Oh, yeah, a home run. Yeah, hopefully going to Coors Field in Denver will get the Cubs offense untracked a little bit because certainly they uh, can't seem to do it right now. It was back in the third inning. Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. Cubs drop the finale 8-2. to two. We'll be back to Houston.
Try Arby's four delicious new Market Fresh Toasted Subs. Make it a combo with curly fries and an ice-cold Pepsi. When you know it, one moment we're on the road to romance, when suddenly it gets interrupted. That's why for guys like me with ED, there's Cialis. Cialis is the only erectile dysfunction tablet clinically proven to both go to work fast in as little as 30 minutes for some men and work up to 36 hours. The fact that Cialis can work fast is great, but having up to 36 hours gives me the option of being ready once the moment is finally right. Tell your doctor about your medical conditions and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injuries, seek immediate medical help if you experience priapism, an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease in vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Why ask your doctor about Cialis? Because even after an interruption, you can still be ready. When the moment is right, you can be ready with Cialis. Thursday, August 9th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Chicago Cubs Baseball, brought to you by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. Your Chicago and Dodge dealers. The Illinois Lottery. No matter how you play, play the Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. Buy Pepsi. Your world, your Pepsi. And by Southwest Airlines. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, Southwest can get you there with over 3,000 nonstop daily flights to over 60 destinations. Visit Southwest.com today. Our next broadcast of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. Your official summer baseball station will be tomorrow night from Denver, Colorado. The Cubs will take on the surging Rockies. It'll be the first of four. Ted Lilly will go for his 13th victory. Ubaldo Jimenez, a very hard-throwing right-hander, will pitch for the Rockies. We'll hit the air at 8 o'clock Central Time. We hope you can join us. Our 60th year of bringing you Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. Baseball like it ought to be. Once again, our final score tonight as the Astros sweep the Cubs. A final in game three, eight to two, Houston. So for my partner, Bob Brindley, Pete Thomas, Skip Ellison, Mark Brady, Bob Borwald, and our entire crew, this is Len Casper inviting you to stay tuned. The WGN News is coming up next. Just so sick of this. Dude, what do you expect? You went with Geico.com. What, to save some money? It's my life, okay? It's just a little loyalty would be nice, that's all. What? Having Geico makes me less of a caveman? Tina's here, we're getting back together. Hey, give us a minute. Geico.com. So easy a caveman can do it. They've always brought you great rooms at great rates. And now, the experts at Hotels.com are the first to bring you flexible booking, which lets you change or even cancel your reservation without any fees from us. So you don't have to worry if your plans change. And with the lowest price guaranteed, you never have to worry about paying too much. That's what flexible booking is all about. Just log on or call our certified experts now to find out more. Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Funniest pets and people can get your groove on. Kick up your heels. Maybe do -si do or do -si don't Watch people and their pets get funky. It's so funny, it'll bring you to your knees. Boogie down with Funniest Pets and People. Brought to you by Kohl's Department Stores. Kohl's, expect great things. Saturday on WGN, each hero and his West Coast crew are in for a Southside welcome, courtesy of Ozzy's Boys in Black. Saturday at 7 on WGN. 
This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. You have to be more aware. Women are on the watch in Lakeview after another attack. The victim got a good look at this suspect, and it seems now there may be two different predators in the neighborhood. Good evening, everyone. I'm Julie Unruh. And I'm Steve Sanders. WGN's Tom Nuggeman has our top story at Area 3 Police Headquarters on the north side. Tom. Really two suspects, all the more reason to warn folks who live on the north side of Chicago as detectives here at Area 3 search for the men responsible for half a dozen attacks on Chicago women. You guys have to be aware. I cannot tell you enough. It's a packed house, 400 women at a public meeting in Lakeview, here to learn how to stay safe. It's, it's very alarming. Um, uh, what we can tell women in the area is, you know, try and be very aware of your surroundings. They're telling them that because the north side's been the scene of yet another attempted sexual assault, the sixth since April. The last five were blamed on the same suspect, a Hispanic male who's still at large. But police say they're looking for a different guy this time, a white male around 30 years old. He's 5'9 or 5'10, 175 pounds, with brown hair, dark eyes, and facial hair. He approached a woman five days ago on West Cornelia, offered to help her carry her bags into her apartment. She said no, but he followed her inside and started choking her. She fought him off and got away with an excellent description for police, the suspect last seen fleeing the scene on an old blue bicycle. Police have promised and delivered a higher presence in Lakeview. They're handing out good advice and personal safety alarms at meetings like tonight's on North Southport, and women near the scene of the latest attack are keeping their guard up. Walking at home alone by myself, I definitely don't do that very often, or I am always try to be on the phone. Well, you know, you used to just walk and have the headphones on at night and not even think about stuff, but you, you have to be more aware. You certainly do have to be more aware and a couple of things police have going for them right now. That is community awareness and solid descriptions of both of those suspects. Anyone with information on either one uh, asked to call Area 3 Police. The number on your screen, 312-744-8261. Live at Area 3, Tom Negevin, WGN News. Okay, Tom, thanks. A recent rape case sent city leaders to the Englewood neighborhood tonight, hoping to inform residents how to better protect themselves. The Chicago Police Caps Division hosted tonight's event. Officers taught the group danger signs and what to watch out for. They also taught some basic self-defense techniques. The meeting comes on the heels of recent Englewood attacks, including a woman raped last week in front of her three-year-old son. Chicago police officers and West Side residents clash for a second time after a deadly police-involved shooting. WGN's Juan Carlos Van Hula live in our newsroom tonight with that story. Juan Carlos. Steve, there is clear distrust of the police on the West Side. The man's family says they want cops to be held accountable. Top brass say they are investigating the matter, but at this time they say it appears officers acted in self-defense. And you go outside now! I am! Okay, let's go. Voice, I can raise my voice. Ah! This is a public building. Chicago police officers finding themselves on the defense of Wednesday in their own building. Protesters enter Area 4 and pandemonium ensues when they are kicked out. They say they seek justice for 18-year-old Aaron Harrison, who was shot dead by police in his West Side neighborhood Monday. Some witnesses say he was unarmed, but police claim he pointed a handgun at them. Harrison's family, who joined a protest from the shooting scene to Area 4, learning from the medical examiner's office he was shot in the back. And they say cops did not try to help him moments after it happened. They don't know if he could have lived or whatever. They just let my son just lay there. In the dirt, you know, in his own blood. Uh, they even flipped him over and handcuffed him after he was dead. Annie Johnson admits her son is no angel, and police say his rap sheet shows that. Arrested at least 13 times, including six felonies. He's been charged with manufacturing, dealing, and possessing heroin. They say they found a loaded 9mm Lorsen semi-automatic at the scene. When asked if some officers acted out of control, Mayor Daly said... Well, it's not out of control. I mean, you, you know police officers. Again... The police department is, is responding to any inquiries anytime they have a shooting. The policy of the police department is always to review every police shooting. 
Well, the Office of Professional Standards will make the final call on whether or not officers acted appropriately. 28th Ward Alderman Ed Smith says he will start his own investigation as well. Residents say neighborhood teens were actually picked up by police today. They claim in an effort to intimidate them, five teens arrested. A police spokeswoman did not know about that incident this morning. Julie, Steve. Well, Travis, thank you. 33-year-old Juan Luna was sentenced today to life in prison for the murders of seven people at a Brown's Chicken restaurant. Luna is one of two men charged in the 1993 killings at the Palatine restaurant. He was convicted last May, and the jury voted not to recommend the death penalty. Luna's attorney says they will appeal. The other man accused of the Brown's Chicken massacre, James Degorski, has pleaded not guilty. He will be tried separately. Bail was set at $200,000 today for the tow truck driver accused of killing a DePaul graduate during a hit-and-run accident. Prosecutors say 29-year-old Jerry Carrillo slammed his tow truck into a car at Elston in Central early Monday morning. The crash killed 22-year-old Benil Samuel and injured two others riding in the vehicle. The Elmwood Park man turned himself into police for questioning and was allegedly picked out of a lineup by a witness. Heavy rains moved across Chicagoland, up to an inch of water dumped in Chicago's Humboldt Park neighborhood. The storm caused some flooding under one viaduct, forcing drivers to proceed with caution. The driving rains ruined the day on the links for most. Some people were caught in the storm and had to be helped back to the club, while others made a beeline for the club on their carts. There was at least one golfer who decided to keep on playing. Coming up, the rain came and went this afternoon, and so did the tornado warnings. Tom Skilling is sorting out the skies. His forecast in just a minute. State employees who aren't getting paid because of the budget delay will hear from teachers who may start the school year without a paycheck. And on the night he set all-time home run record, what was Barry Bond's favorite part of the evening? Who is Dave Chappelle? Really? He's Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods. For Shizzle. Rick James. <laughs> Lil John. Okay. Blackzilla. A Black Klansman. A Milkman. Tron Carter. Silky Johnson. Gallagher Prince. <laughs> and he's the host of the wildest, baddest, funniest, most outrageous show on television. It's a celebration. <laughs> Chappelle's show is coming to Late Night. Premiere September 14th on Superstation WGN. Thank you for making me feel pretty. You give me comfort when no one else can. Thank you for loving my curves as much as I do. Thank you for making my life so colorful. XO Candace. <laughs> oh, great. Hey, guys. Another apple pie. Who do you think this is for? Soft, comfortable, fit for me. For all your wonderful curves. I work hard at making my home look nice. So I don't want it to be obvious that I have an air freshener. Being a chameleon, well, I like everything to blend in. That's why I got this new Airwick Hidden Pleasure Scented Oil. Its discreet frosted glass appearance fits in with any decor. And its frosted glass refills come in the scents I love. Mmm. Kids, time for dinner. <laughs> new Airwick Hidden Pleasure Scented Oil. Airwick, it's good to be home. Special agent, when can you get back on the road? Hey, I'll show you. When insurance policyholders get their cars repaired at one of insurance's certified body shops, they can monitor repairs online 24-7. I'll be back on the road in no time. Visit insurance.com today. And that's our hot debate team. Cute all over print. And our hot chess team. Love that fleece hoodie. Even our geeks are hot. Hot everyone gets so hot. Duh, Burlington Coat Factory. Burlington Coat Factory. Hot labels, awesome prices. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. The stalemate over the state budget continues in Springfield tonight. Lawmakers and the governor are split on whether there's light at the end of the tunnel. Though some say it's the nearly 5,000 state employees who will be left in the dark. WGN's Antoine Lewis joins us now with more. Good evening, Antoine. Good evening, Julie. The state has been operating without a new spending plan since July 1st. And some are saying time has run out and state dollars right along with it. As the Springfield stalemate continues, a number of state employees are bracing for the worse. Life without a paycheck. 
This morning, state lawyer Chris Fisher applied for an emergency loan just in case. It may happen, it may not. We hope that the, uh, the budget fact does get passed, but uh, there's a contingency plan in place for state employees and we're going to take advantage of it. A contingency plan not all state employees will qualify for the result of the budget deadlock, which is also impacting schools. About $170 million in education funding scheduled for release this Friday is now in doubt. And the Illinois Federation of Teachers says scores of school district contracts have yet to be settled. It's embarrassing uh, and they have to fix it and get it right. And uh, it's not rocket science. They just have to have the will. And uh, apparently that hasn't, that hasn't been present. May 31st was the deadline for the new budget. Extensions have been added. All of it now expired. But the grudge match between Governor Blagojevich and state lawmakers is in full swing. With state controller Dan Hines also caught in the middle. Unsure if he can write the checks to pay nearly 5,000 state employees. I'm getting the sense that they're moving closer to a budget agreement, and I hope that happens because uh, we want people to get paid and we want government to keep operating. Now, the union representing state employees has threatened legal action if employees are not paid. Still, no agreement has been reached. You can count on us to keep you updated. Steve. Certainly will, Antoine. Thank you. The CTA board has approved a less severe version of its doomsday plan. This takes effect in September unless state lawmakers approve a funding package for the CTA. It would cut service overall by 8%. Those cuts would total $7.5 million, and 39 bus routes would be eliminated. Also, CTA bus fares would increase to $2.50 a ride. Train fares would increase to $2.50 in off-peak hours. Three dollars during peak hours. The financial position of the authority is such where we simply do not have the dollars to not go ahead with fare increases or service cuts in the event that we don't get additional dollars. Well, these cuts are less severe than in the contingency plan that was announced back in May because CTA President Ron Huberman found an additional twenty million dollars in savings. Many Democratic presidential candidates were in town yesterday debating in front of big labor, and the AFL-CIO endorsement now goes to none of them. The nation's largest labor union federation has postponed making any presidential endorsement, allowing its 55 unions to make their own choices. Candidates will now have to increase their lobbying efforts to sway the 10 million workers the federation represents. Union leaders say there's no consensus candidate. Rescue workers in Utah are getting closer to where they believe six coal miners are trapped. The thin holes they've been drilling for air and food are about 1,000 feet from the miners' location. The rescuers hope to reach them by Friday, but that would be four days since the mine caved in, with still no sign that the miners survived. It will likely be another week before the tunnels will be clear enough to get the workers out. I mean, they got water in there, I'm sure. They got what food they took. Uh, I don't know how long it'll last, but they've got the equipment they need to stay alive. Well, the mine's outspoken owner, Bob Murray, insists that an earthquake caused the cave-in, not neglect, but experts are not so sh exactly sure what happened. President Bush says the government will help in any way they can. New warnings about potentially hazardous toothpaste manufactured in China and sold here in Illinois. The newly recalled brands may contain a chemical found in antifreeze. The recall involves Rightmax toothpaste and Dentapro brand cavity-fighting fluoride toothpaste in fresh spearmint flavor. No illnesses have yet been reported. The toothpaste were sold in Illinois and 10 other states. Well, up next, the forecast we've all been waiting for. Tom Skilling says there's a possible cool-down in the days ahead, along with a few surprises, of course. And making a wish come true, the lucky kid who got to ride around Chicago in the Batmobile. American Idol Rewind, the Saturday Superstation WG. who want to get the most out of their cars. It's Bridgestone or nothing. When my doctor told me my high blood pressure may have led to my erectile dysfunction, I was surprised. But then he said there was something I could do. When I found out my diabetes could have led to my ED, I learned there was help. 
My doctor told me about Levitra. Levitra is clinically proven to work for men with ED, even those with high blood pressure or diabetes. Levitra is only for men healthy enough for sexual activity. If you have heart problems or are on alpha blocker therapy, talk to your doctor before taking Levitra. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing and stuffy or runny nose. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease in vision, stop taking Levitra and call your doctor right away. Way. Doctors know Levitra helps treat ED, even in men with high blood pressure. And in men with diabetes. Over a million men just like me have already taken Levitra. You should talk to your doctor about Levitra. The more you know about ED, the more you'll want to know about Levitra. For great pickup power, there's Pledge Duster Plus. With the spray. It's the only duster with a multi-surface spray. A duster that grabs dust from glass and electronics. And when sprayed directly on other surfaces, even Swiffer Duster can't match the power of Pledge Duster Plus to pick up more dust. I said it's better with the spray. The beauty of Pledge Duster Plus. It's better with the spray. S.C. Johnson Family Company. I'm Mark Goldston, Chairman and CEO of Net Zero. Look, we all know that every Internet provider takes you to the same Internet, so why pay more to get there? At Net Zero, we give you Internet access at a great price, starting at $9.95 a month. You'll get features like pop-up blocker, virus protection, and the fastest surfing over dial-up. And Net Zero is risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. All this for just $9.95 a month. Call 1-800-NET-ZERO or visit netzero.com. time in recorded history, a tornado touched down in Brooklyn. It happened early today as violent thunderstorms plowed through the area. Only minor injuries were reported in Brooklyn. The heavy rain was blamed for the death of one woman killed in a car accident off of Staten Island, and the storm caused massive headaches for New York commuters, flooding subways and rail lines well, both. You said it happens. Yeah. It can happen anywhere. It, it really can. I mean, you get them in Australia and Spain and the U.K., uh, almost anywhere anymore? in the world. It just happens, Julie, we got 75% of the world's tornadoes here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Ted Fujita, the famous tornado factory mm -hmm. uh, 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 researcher, used to say that we're like a uh, tornado factory with no peer in the world in producing tornadoes. Uh, well, pretty amazing. Had a good day. Yeah, we did. Speaking of yeah. tornadoes, uh, we had our own funnel clouds today. No touchdowns, no damage, but boy, it rained, and there were two separate outbreaks of severe storms, and look at Storm Tracker tonight, and all of that lightning. Uh, yet another wave of thunderstorms is bearing down on the Chicago metro area, and parts of us may be in uh, storms by morning with another wave perhaps during the morning tomorrow. We've had seven of these uh, uh, these uh, pulsating outbreaks of thunderstorms. Two of them occurred today, but seven of them since Sunday when this very humid air, and look at this uh, time lapse today, buildings shrouded in clouds, uh, then some real action. The, the sky is darkened as the clouds thicken and thunderstorms come in. We mix out some of the lower clouds, and you see the velocity shear here, and then we get some sun to break from the clouds, and the camera becomes covered with rain as downpours sweep into the loop. How's that for a weather day? There's a lot of action going on there. Schaumburg had 1.07 inches of rain. There was one corridor of heavy rain. This is the one with the funnel clouds that set off the, the sirens. And a second one hit Southern King County. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Sugar Grove, for instance, had 3.70 inches of rain. And of that, uh, 3.2 inches came down in just 80 minutes' time. Look at some of our weather bug rain sensors around the area. Sugar Grove, Palatine, Glenview, Elmhurst, all areas with over an inch of rain and funnel clouds reported in a whole host of communities from uh, Maple Grove all the way east to Schaumburg, uh, Barrington uh, Heights. Uh, we had Arlington Heights and with uh, the air raid sirens sounding today and at this hour in the wake of the 3.70 inches of rain which was the final tally from the latest burst of rain in Aurora it's still 73 degrees and there were some gusts at 27 miles an hour. It's warm, it's muggy tonight but for the first time in 82 hours the dew point has dropped below 70 degrees, that muggy Gulf Coast level. We're in the 60s here. But don't let that fool you. There's plenty of moisture around, and it's going to feed new thunderstorms in the next 24 hours. Look at the rains as they look downtown, and as we move west to a weather bug camera, well, we missed that. I'm sorry, out in Iowa, there were some uh, big thunderstorms uh, pictured there. You can see, here's this one little wave comes in. 
blows up some storms this afternoon. Uh, watch it again right there in our northern suburbs. And then a second line develops down south. And you can see this new batch forming out to the west here. What's going on here is we've got blazingly hot air. There were record highs in Washington, D.C., down to Atlanta, Georgia, where they had their hot, warmest nighttime temperature ever and warmed at 100 degrees. The, the, the Lola there last night was just 82. It was 100 in St. Louis and Nashville, Tennessee, and 99 in Oklahoma City. Actually, they touched 100 for the first time this season. They had had about 50 more 100-degree days by this time a year ago. All the rains and wet soils have held their temperatures down till now. Our dew point is 66 tonight and but downstate it is still humid and look at the heat indices down there with 100s forecast again tomorrow lots of heat and humidity to feed the thunderstorms expected to come into this area here's the rain that occurred last night you see that that first little line right there that's last night's rain here are the two little lines right here that set up today we'll we'll blow these up for you uh, these things occurred around three o'clock this afternoon doppler radar first detected circulation in northern king county and the weather service put a uh, uh, tornado tornado warning out on that basis and then uh, observers on the surface reported uh, all the funnel clouds and the sirens uh, started sounding. Fortunately, as we say, no touchdowns. But tonight, you'll see the new thunderstorms laying down big rains out to the west and that may be on the way to parts of the area. These are total rainfalls from various cities around the Chicago area. So many places picked over an inch, picked up over an inch of rain, and yet it could be in your area. And this is the way summer rains occur. You got just a couple of hundredths or a couple of tenths of an inch of rain. These things hit hard in narrow corridors, and they they move around. They're a devil to forecast. Uh, take it from me, because uh, where they set up is different with every outbreak. Here you can see the flood warnings in the counties filled in there out to the uh, west of us, and we're under a flood watch through tomorrow morning because the grounds are saturated and these multiple waves of storms have set up a situation where everything runs off when it rains hard, and it does uniquely in thunderstorms and may in the next 24 hours. Well, a flash flood watch tonight, cloudy, hazy. Storms expected to redevelop, especially late tonight. Lows from 70 to 75 and east winds at 3 to 12, bringing in at times some fog along the lake. Hazy, warm, and muggy tomorrow. Active thunderstorms may occur in several clusters, and then a little mixed sun could develop in the afternoon, and that could pop a thunderstorm in a spot or two again later in the day. We'll have a high tomorrow of 86. Seven, then finally start cloudy and turn just modestly less humid in the afternoon we'll Friday it. and turn you the like rain that. off Friday, yeah. Saturday. But that won't last. We'll be back with a seven day later in the broadcast. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. Okay, guys. Engine start. Four, three, two, one. Zero. The shuttle Endeavour blasted off into space tonight right on time. On board the flight, school teacher and astronaut Barbara Morgan. She was the backup for Krista McAuliffe on the Challenger flight that exploded during takeoff in 1986. Endeavour's launched without any problem. It should reach the International Space Station on Friday. A new study shows the Internet is surpassing more traditional forms of media. Reuters reports the study shows when people spend time looking at media, a little over 5% of it is spent on the Internet. That number is more than both reading newspapers or listening to music. Watching television and listening to the radio remain far and away the leaders. The study was conducted by a media industry private equity firm. Well, stay with us. Sports is next. The new and improved Bears offense is anxious to show their stuff in Saturday's preseason opener. And as the Cubs struggled in Houston, it was nothing compared to the nightmare the first place Brewers were experiencing in Colorado. Rich King is coming up next with sports. Becker, late nights on Superstation WGA. Thursday, August 9th, Dairy Queen's most magical treat will become even more magical because all proceeds from every blizzard you buy help children in your Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Live from WGN-TV Chicago, the official drawing of the Illinois Lottery. Good evening, I'm Jeanette Rivera with your winning lottery numbers for Wednesday, August 8, 2007. First game is pick three. First winning number is seven. Second number, two. And the third and final pick three number, seven. That makes 
with your pick three numbers for tonight. Seven, two, seven. And now it's time for Green Ball Double Draw, the game that gives you a second chance to win. If the ball comes up green, we'll have a bonus play of pick three, and each time the white ball comes up, we'll remove it, giving you a better chance to win next time. So here we go. Think green, and it's the green ball. That means we will play Green Ball Double Draw. And here we go. Make sure you check your uh, pick three tickets again. You might be a winner now. First winning number is two. Second number, six. And the third and final victory number, three. And that makes your green ball double draw numbers for tonight. Two, six, three. And now moving on to pick four. We have Lotto tonight. That jackpot is $3 million, mega millions on Friday night. $105 million. First big four number, zero. Second number, one. Third number, one. And the fourth and final big four number, seven. That makes your big four numbers for tonight, zero, one, one, seven. And now moving on to Little Lot of Game. You can play seven nights a week with a roll of a jackpot that starts at $100,000, and that is tonight's jackpot. First Little Lot of Number, 34. Second number, 16. Third Little Lot of Number, 25. Fourth number, 35. The fifth and final number, 6. So to recap, Little Lot of Numbers for tonight, 34, 16. 25, 35, and 6. And now, lotto time. Tonight, jackpot, $3 million. Good luck. First lotto number, 46. Second number, 12. Third lotto number, 1. Fourth number, 7. The fifth lotto number. 22 and the final number that number 37 so to recap lotto numbers for tonight 46 12 1 7 22 and 37 and again make sure you join us uh for on friday night for mega millions at jackpot 105 million dollars this is jeanette rivera have a great night Tonight's lottery drawing was brought to you by WGN-TV and supervised by the accounting firm of Clifton Gunderson. Centrino Duo Processor Technology. Dell, yours is here. if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Don't take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injuries, stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease in vision or an erection lasting longer than four hours.
These are our seats right here. Yes. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> For the same price as here. Peanuts! Why wouldn't you? Oh, it's the same with auto insurance. With discounts up to 40%, it's possible to get the personal service of a State Farm agent for the same or less than those other guys. Call an agent 24-7 or visit statefarm.com. Rebecca, cool yet sassy in an all-over print. Johnny, rough and tumble in a fleece hoodie. Burlington Coat Factory's got what's hot for back to school and fabulous savings. Burlington Coat Factory, hot labels, awesome prices. Superstation WGN is your home for big league baseball, so come on home. Rich, things are really collapsing for the Cubs, it yeah, looks like. Put us at ease, Rich. It's yeah. really not that bad. Give you, us I've, something. I've been saying since April the Cubs will win the division. Nobody else is better. <laughs> and it's proof because everybody else is losing, including the Cubs. Including right. the Cubs. Well, there you go. Have enough, all have enough wins before it's all over. The dog days have come early for the Cubs. They got swept in Houston tonight and have now lost four in a row. To make matters worse, Aramis Ramirez had to sit out tonight's game with a nagging wrist injury, something they could ill afford after the loss of Alfonso Soriano. The Astros able to stash it away early tonight. Two men on the third one. Carlos Sombrano on the hill. Great shot, lips run, and the gap in right center. This will score two runs. This made the score 3 0. The Cubs bats again, meantime, going absolutely nowhere tonight, as they have been for the last two nights. Sombrano fans and takes it out in the real culprit. The bat. The Z man got pretty tagged tag pretty good tonight. How about the blast here by Lance Berkman, the center? A colossal shot. And the Astros sweep the Cubs in the three game set, the final 8 2. And the only good news today comes from Denver, where the Brewers continue to self destruct. Brad Hopp with a two run homer for the Rockies, who got 23 hits and buried Milwaukee 19 4. Giovanni Gallardo giving up 11 runs in less than three innings. The Cubs still trail the Brewers, though, by one game. On the south side, things got a bit sweeter for the White Sox tonight in the sixth inning as Victor Martinez tags one to center. Prepared to play as much or whatever they want me to do. And for the third year in a row, fighting Illini golf coach Mike Small is the winner of the Illini Open. He shot a 66 today to win an eight under par. Overall, Small has won this thing four times. He took a flight to Tulsa right afterward his tee off tomorrow in the PGA Championship. Hope he can sleep on the plane and hope he can survive that heat. I guess they expect some record heat down there. Tom can tell us more maybe about that, but in Tulsa for that golf tournament tomorrow, the PGA. Ooh, okay. Hot. Hot and muggy gives way to slightly cooler and still muggy. <laughs> and don't forget about the storms. We're not in the clear yet. Tom Skilling's seven-day forecast is coming up next. Who is Dave Chappelle? Really? He's Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods. For Shizzle. Rick James. <laughs> Lil John. Okay. Blackzilla. A Black Klansman. A Milkman. Tron Carter. Silky Johnson. Gallagher Prince. <laughs> and he's the host of the wildest, baddest, funniest, most outrageous show on television. It's a celebration. <laughs> Chappelle's show is coming to Late Night. Premiere September 14th on Superstation WGN. Thank you for making me feel pretty. You give me comfort when no one else can. Thank you for loving my curves as much as I do. Thank you for making my life so colorful. XO Candace. <laughs> oh, great. Hey, guys. Another apple pie. Who do you think this is for? Soft, comfortable, fit for me. For all your wonderful curves. I work hard at making my home look nice. So I don't want it to be obvious that I have an air freshener. Being a chameleon, well, I like everything to blend in. That's why I got this new Airwick Hidden Pleasure Scented Oil. Its discreet frosted glass appearance fits in with any decor. And its frosted glass refills come in the scents I love. Mmm. Kids, time for dinner. <laughs> new Airwick Hidden Pleasure Scented Oil. Airwick, it's good to be home. Special agent, when can you get back on the road? Hey, I'll show you. When insurance policyholders get their cars repaired at one of insurance's certified body shops, they can monitor repairs online 24-7. I'll be back on the road in no time. Visit insurance.com today. 
And that's our hot debate team. Cute all over print. And our hot chess team. Love that fleece hoodie. Even our geeks are hot. Hot everyone gets so hot. Duh, Burlington Coat Factory. Burlington Coat Factory. Hot labels, awesome prices. Hey, check out this set of wheels. We wish it were part of WGN's fleet of cars. <laughs> it's our, our Tom Skilling's personal fleet. <laughs> It's actually the Batmobile making a very special appearance outside WGN Studios and for a good cause. 17-year-old Daniel Richardson is a leukemia patient. Today, he had his make-a-wish oh dream fulfilled by riding in the Cape Crusaders car. The uh, Staten Island resident also got to visit the set of the new Batman movie entitled The Dark Knight, which, as you know, is being filmed right here in Chicago. Man, that's, uh, that's quite a ride. <laughs> it is quite a ride. And we got to see it kind of spin around, and that was before yeah. the rain came wow. this afternoon. Well, you might have needed that or a pontoon boat to get around in some of the western <laughs> suburbs uh, here. And we may have more coming. This uh, weather bug camera out in Iowa shows the storms that may be in toward morning. Watch this. It's kind of cool. And then you see the rain shafts going across there. Mm. And, uh, boy, the heavens have opened in that area. Here's our seven-day forecast, 86 tomorrow. Storm clusters could be in by morning in parts of the area. And then uh, redevelop in the afternoon in scattered fashion with a little mixed sun in between. But heavy rains where the storms are uh, uh, most intense. And then 85, cloudy early, partly sunny later. The heat's back, maybe an isolated thunderstorm Sunday afternoon. And heat is back from the second wave Tuesday, Wednesday. So we'll watch that carefully. Look at our RPM model's forecast of rainfall. And look how it kind of orients itself through the metro area right here. Uh, so where you see that red and yellow, that's uh, where the models say we have a potential of storms. And look at this, by 3 or 4 in the morning, it'll be coming into the city and uh, maybe tapering off for rush hour, but then scattering up again in the afternoon right well, there. Well, might be waking us up again, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, that's, guys. That is the news for this Wednesday night. I'm Steve Sanders. And I'm Julie Owner for Rich King, Tom Skilling, and all of us here at WGN. Mm -hmm. Have a great night, everybody. are on the cutting edge of comedy. Scrubs starts right now on Superstation WGN. If you work in a hospital long enough, you get used to anything. Whether it's Dr. Kim, who makes patients take their pants off no matter what. Yep, you've got pink eye. Can I put my pants back on? Right after I put some drops in. Or nobody remembering Ray Kate's 80th birthday. Why aren't you making a bigger fuss? Uh, I would have, Mr. Kate, but Dr. Reed is throwing a huge celebration for you later. I should tell her about that. The truth is, thanks to modern medicine, 80 isn't that big a deal anymore. It's not like the olden days. Let us not feel sorrow 